Good morning, Emily. Up the chapel? Yes, I am. You can come with me if you like. Uh, well, uh, people might start to talk. That's a very poor excuse. In fact, that's the worst I've ever heard. Sorry, best I can manage. <laughs> Have a... Oh, no, have you heard? There's no lining in this house. Come and have a look. Look. Now, who would you say, Cheryl, that this is? Well, I'd say it was your husband. No. This? This is Super Kev, is this? Super Kev is world's greatest mechanic. Morning, Cheryl. Uh, morning, Super Kev. Not only does he work from Mondays to Saturdays with overtime, but Super Kev goes in on Sundays as well. Ah. And this is because, well, Super Kev doesn't need days off like ordinary folk. Because Super Kev, he has muscles of steel. Unfortunately, though, he has no brains. But then, you can't have everything. Well, yeah. no. well Super Kev has got no flipping choice. Of course, has you've it? got a flipping choice. You've got a choice of telling Tom Casey he wants somebody else in to help I've you. I've already told him, Anna. Anyway, I'll see you later. Give us a kiss. I'm sorry I've not made you any sandwiches, but I'll bring them round to you later. Lunchtime. All right. All right. See ya. See ya. See ya. Poor old Kev. It's not really him I'm mad at, Shirley. It's the fella that's bought Garage. Mm. He expects Kevin to do all the work, you know. Sit down, I'll go and get a cup. Ta. Actually, Curly's not a lot better. He'll be spending most of the day with his nose in his books revising. Yeah, but at least he's at home. Ah, well, yeah, that's my problem. What, you don't want him at home? Well, not today, no. Well, I don't want him seeing me getting the stuff ready for this do tonight, do oh. I? Well, it, like I told you, it's supposed to be a surprise, which most things are anyway to Curly, but, well, it won't be. Well, not if he sees me making a pile of food mm. anyway. So what I was wondering... Well, I'll tell you what, why don't we make all food down here and I'll give you a hand and at last minute we'll just take it up to your flat. Brilliant. Sorry, though, what were you going to say? I was going to say that, that's why it's brilliant. <laughs> well, you got to, mate, I promised him. Well, you shouldn't have promised him. Oh, come on, Curly, you played a blind the last time. How can you play a blinder as a linesman? Anyway, I don't think that big winger of yours would agree. Why? He threatened to duff me up if I put him offside again. He was only joking. He can't tell what he says when he's not got his teeth in. Look, I've got work to do. I've got an exam in the morning. No way. So, I'll take a few hours off. It'll do you good. Look, we can't get anybody else, Curly. Well, not as good as you, cos when you run that line, you've got authority. And you know the rules. Which is more than most of them do. Oh, hi. Hey, yeah. Listen, Shirley, you don't mind, do you, if Curly runs a line for us today? Oh, why should I mind? I don't even know what it means. <laughs> Listen, I'm just going to this shop and then I'll be out for a bit, OK? Good. I've got work to do. Oh, come on. What's up with you? Hey, we'll see you later, Martin, eh? Hey? Tonight, maybe. Oh, right, yeah. OK. Right. See you. Right. So, come on, get your boots on. We're off. You might be. I've got work to do. Oh, Curly, all this studying. It can't be any good for you. You've got to get out get some fresh air. I said no! All right, all right. So you're not sure about it? Well, I'll make you a cup of tea. We'll have to think about Martin, it. Martin, will you leave me alone? I've got work to do. I <sighs> want to get on with it, and I'm certainly not going to be a linesman. All right. Well, you're no good anyway. Listen, Curly, one of these days, your brain will just explode. You'll be sat there and woof. You'll have green bits all over your ceiling. Bye. Bye. Don't me. Right, Mrs Bishop. I'll be out of your way in a couple of shakes, and then you can have the house to yourself for the rest of the day. No necessity, Mr. Sugden. I thought I'd explain to you I shall be out for the rest of the day with Mr. Dabner. Yes, well, yeah, you might want to pop back for your tea or whatever, you know, and I thought you'd feel more secure in your mind if I were elsewhere. Well, that's very thoughtful of you. I did. We're one of them people that never knows when they're in the way. I really would. And you're going to be with a gentleman friend. Well, last thing you want is me cluttering the place up. Oh, you're not cluttering the place up. Oh, dear. Not wanted on boys. That's what used to stick on my kit bag when you were going abroad, you know. And then uh, you could uh, sling in the hole out of the way. Oh, Mr. Sugden, I don't want you slung in any hold. And I'm quite happy you should continue to regard this as home. I really am. Well, it's good of you to say so. Well, I'll let you know when I made a definite decision. Thank you. And where are you going today? 
Somewhere nice. Well, I, uh, I thought I'd go to Eaton Park. I mean, I can catch a bus there from Corner Rosamond Street and John Street. Oh, well, you'll enjoy that. Thank you. Yes, unless, of course, you and your gentleman friend were considering going there because it's immaterial to me. <sighs> I could always go somewhere else. I don't know where we'll be going, Mr Sugden, but if it does turn out to be Heaton Park, I'm sure there's plenty of room for all of us. Mm. Bye. By gum, you must be on good money, the hours you work. Oh, must I? Everything all right, is it? Well, now you mention it. Because I'll tell you what, I wish I had a bolt all like this to escape to. In fact, I've a good mind to go and get me overalls and give you yeah. a hand. Well, don't let me stop you. Oh, it wouldn't be you stopping me, Kevin, oh, no. But if I don't take my wife down to the wagons of a Sunday dinner, my life won't be worth living. Yeah. Well, my wife ain't too happy about me being here, either. Is she not? It's like I told you, I can't carry on on my own. I've got to have someone else in. Of course you do. I do. I oh, know. Oh. Well, then. He's here. Oi. Come and meet your new boss, Kevin. This is Mark. Hi. Right. Yeah. You have a word? Now, what's up? I thought you were crying out for me to get somebody in. Yeah, I am. But it's me who's got to work all day with him, isn't it? Absolutely. So? Don't you think I should have had some say in who we set on? Ah, yeah, well, normally, yeah, but this is like exceptional circumstances. Oh? Well, what's exceptional circumstances about? Oi, uh, well, when I said his name was Mark, happened I should have said the other bit as well. Casey. What? You mean he's your... My son, yeah. Can I paint a bit of please, Jack? Thank you. Yeah. And, uh... Uh, I don't know. And I don't know. You got many of them. Loads of them. Orange juice. Orange. Orange? Yes. Thank you very much, but I've got that myself. I'm just trying to save your eyes till you get your new glasses. Yes, I bet you can't wait for it, eh? Got all your cracks worked out. I'm specky four eyes and all that, have you? Sorry, Jack. Hey? No, I thought you were talking to me. You specky four eyes. No, 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 no. That was just something I was saying to Tina. You see, Deirdre looks nice in glasses. Why shouldn't you? Well, maybe he doesn't think I do look nice. No, of course I do. She always looks smashing. Hey, Jack, here, try these on. Give you an idea of what you look like. No. Yeah, go on. No, 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 no. You're, you're very kind, but it's, uh, it's unhygienic, isn't it? Jenny. 120, lovely. <laughs> right, thank you, Betty. No problem. Hey, the light of the stranger won't say it. The new man in my life. Will you keep him on in bed? Definitely not. If you want to suggest a blindfold, I can see the advantages oh, in that. Hey, I'll blindfold you. Cheers. I'm 180. There you go, sir. You got this uh, dinner curlers tonight, then? First I've heard of it. <laughs> You and Curly both, then. It's a surprise, dude. Shirley's putting on things. It's supposed to be the unofficial winning anniversary or something. I don't think I'm really in the mood for parties, Martin. Oh, well, you'll love this one, then. It's not really a party. It's just like a quiet little rave up, you know. <laughs> Do you want me to check it? Yeah. 82, lovey. Spot on, Betty. There's Martin, straight ahead. Five paces, don't Thank you, man. <laughs> Didn't care, but I was only trying to help her. I thought she'd have realised that. Oh, it's not Emily again, is it? I mean, she's never hesitated to give me advice in the past. <laughs> I still remember what she said when I told her I was going to marry you. What? Oh, it's best forgotten now. Well, I should leave her to sort out her own destiny. There are some people you just can't help. I mean, you are sure about what you said, aren't you, that Arthur Dabner's still in regular contact with his wife? Yes. Well, I wouldn't like to swear to it in court. You mean you're not sure? No, it's just something I heard around the office. Oh, dear it. Well, I didn't know you were going to confront her with it. You could have stopped me. That's easier said than done. You can be very willful sometimes, you know. Oh, well, thank you. Anyway, there's no harm done. <laughs> Emily's still seeing Arthur. She's made it abundantly clear she's taking not the slightest notice of your advice. So good luck to her. Hello? Oh, Arthur, where are you? I've been expecting you. I know. And I'm terribly sorry about this, but I'm afraid something rather urgent has come up at work. Oh, dear. I won't bore you with the details, but they've insisted I've come in this afternoon to sort it out. Which means an end to our little, our little outing. Oh, well, these things do happen. I did refuse at first, but, well, 
It is rather important. I understand, of course I do, and oh, there'll be other days. It's good of you to take it like that. Oh, well, what did you expect? Didn't think I was going to bite your head off. No, of course I didn't. Anyway, I'd better be off. I'll be in touch as soon as I can. Are you all right? Oh, yes, I'm very well. Good. Bye for now, then. Is everything all right? Yes. Just some message to do with work, I promise to pass on. So, get going, shall we? A dinner break, boss. Oh, yeah. We used to have one every day when I worked before. Hey, we're being invaded. Oh, hiya. Oh, yeah. I bet you've got forgotten. Oh, but I'm ready for them now. Oh, yeah. Uh, Mrs. Mark, who's just started. Sally, my wife, and Shirley. Oh, Hello. What's that? Tom Casey got his finger out eventually, then. Yeah, but. Well, uh... about time, it's all I can say. The way the fellas muck you about, Kevin, I think it's Listen terrible. I do, really. Do you know, it was just meanness. Listen. It was meanness because the guy didn't want to pay anybody else. Will you listen to me a minute, please? What? Mark here is, uh... Tom Casey's son. Oh. Is it all right for nip off for some dinner, boss? Yeah, sure, go. Cheers. Oh, I didn't know, did I? You could have warned me. Yeah, it doesn't matter. So, uh, what have you two been up to, then? Oh, we've just about cracked it, haven't we? Yeah, we've made piles of stuff. Yeah, all waiting on your table, ready to be taken up to our flat while Curly's having his bath and cutting his toenails, <laughs> which he does every Sunday, you might be interested to know. Oh, no, not really. I've <laughs> made so much stuff, you are going to be eating pizzas for a month. Hey, <laughs> save me some pizzas I could live on. Oh, why don't you come and help us demolish them then tonight? It's only a bit of a surprise due from me fella, but you're welcome. Oh, well, thanks. Yeah, Kevin will tell you where it is, won't you, Kev? Right, uh, I'll see you later then. Half an hour. Half an hour? Yes. Half an hour. Aye, aye. What's up? Seems all right. He seems all right. He's the boss's son. I mean, what sort of position does that put me in? I was better off on my own. Come on, then. That's it. Come on, then. That's it. Come on, then. How do you do? Hello. A friend of yours? Just somebody I've met a time or two. Do you have to do this now? I'm only tidying up. Well, please, don't do. Listen, why do you have a break anyway? Get some fresh air, it'll do you good. Fresh air will not do me good. Revising will do me good. I can get fresh air for the rest of my life. I'll shift my feet and I'll shift the rest of me to somewhere where I can get some peace and... Peace and quiet. What do you mean? Where are you going? The library. What library? The poly. Oh, don't be so daft, Curly. It won't be open on a Sunday. Oh, it's open today. It's open to late today. And why is it open to late today? Because in case I failed to mention it, I've got an exam in the morning. An exam that happens to be a bit important to my future. All right, I'll pull the vacuum away. No, no, don't bother. I'd rather go. I should have done that in the first place. I'll see you tonight. Right. Yeah, but what time tonight? I don't know. Why does it matter? Oh, I'd just like to know, that's all. You won't be late. No, no, I shouldn't think so. See ya.
Oh, you're not really worried about your new specs, are you? No, no, it's not to worry about, is it? No! Not at all, no. Unless... Oh, yes. Well, I mean, your eyes are going, aren't they? So I suppose it must make you wonder which of your other faculties will start to go next. Because, I mean, you said they said there's seven ages in men, don't they? So you must be heading for, ooh, what, six and a half? You know, you've got a very cruel streak in you. You wouldn't like to take up blood sports hey, or something. Let you? me know when your birthday is. I'll buy you a Zimmer frame. <laughs> Hello, uh, a half a bitter and a sweet sherry, please. Oh, how do you know I want a sweet sherry? Might want something else. I might want a... I don't know, a dry sherry. Oh, sorry. Uh, a dry sherry. No, dry... no, no, I'll have a sweet sherry. I just like to be asked. So that's a half and a... Sweet sherry. Sweet yeah. sherry. Maybe you don't seem your usual happy self today. Do I not? <laughs> Mind you, I know what it is. The Sunday blues. Too much time spent doing nothing. I get them myself sometimes, you know. Man was not born to be idle, Mavis. Nor woman, either. It leads to introspection and melancholia. That's 90p, please. Oh, sorry. Yes, thank you. I wasn't aware that I had been idle, Derek. In fact, I thought I'd spent the entire day cooking and cleaning. Ah, yes, but the mind isn't engaged. Oh, my mind's been well and truly engaged. My mind's been engaged wondering what Emily's going to think of me for telling a whole load of lies about a new gentleman You're friend. not still harping on about that? Well, she's a good friend of mine, Derek, and... I don't want to think that I said what I said out of malice and spite. I was right, you know. What about? Sunday. The day when people tend to brood, like you're doing. Oh. Yourself. A uh, pipe, please, and a vodka and tonic and half a cake. Oh, you'll have me falling over. Oh, I'll pick you up again. <laughs> <laughs> I saw that daughter of yours going off somewhere this afternoon. Yeah. Beginning to look quite a young lady, isn't she? Yeah, amazing, isn't it? Or do I mean alarming? You turn your back and suddenly you've got a teenager on your hands. Well, you've got oh. it all to come. Mm. I left Jenny at home in front of her dressing table. Mind you, I don't mind her going out. I think it'll do her good. As a matter of fact, you're going to that do at your shop. Okay. What do at my shop? Well, shop flat. Aren't Curly and Shirley having a bit of a party? They're not, are they? Oh, did they not invite you then, Alf? I don't want to invite you. All I want is them that have been invited to show due respect for other folks' property. Well, I think he only went off because he was mad at me, but it was a bit of luck, really, you know. I mean, it makes all this more of a surprise. Do you know, I'm glad I'm not brainy. It can't be much fun, can it? Oh, it seems to be agony if girl is out to go by. Aren't you glad you're not brainy, Kev? Hey, you mind? Oh, you know what I mean? Yeah, I do. And I don't like it. Hey, did you tell that mall lad where to come? I did, yeah. But if he was as late getting here, if he was late getting back from his dinner, he would have all gone home anyway. <laughs> <laughs> what time are you expecting, Curly? Oh, wait, nine o'clock, you know. Hey, I can't wait to see his face when he comes through that door. <laughs> well, I've saved you some tea if you want it. <coughs> oh, well, I don't want to put you to any trouble. Oh, it was no trouble. I had to make something for myself anyway. Oh, did you get out to your tea then? Uh, no, no. Oh. I didn't get out at all, as a matter of fact. Arthur rang me to say there was some sort of sudden emergency at the office. Sudden emergency? I see. There we are. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Very nice, that. <laughs> Don't be those. Did you bump into anybody you knew in Heaton Park? Er, uh, no. Nobody. Nobody at all? Well, that's unusual for you. No, nobody at all. <laughs> <laughs> and it just so turned up then, eh? Probably going to report back to his daddy, and I will spend my leisure time as well. Isn't that ridiculous? I'm really glad you came. Well, drinks are over there anyway. Just help yourself. Okay. We don't have to stop here long, do we? Give it a chance. All you've seen is this. I could do the hour. I'll make it up to you. All right, boss. <laughs> uh, this is Shannon. I still can't work out whether it's me she fancies on the motor. Neither can I. I don't know. You do run a motor then, do you? Well, I can generally talk my dad to let me use one of his second handers. I'm doing him a favour, really. Proving he got engines in him. Yeah, yeah, you're making a bad mistake, you know, working for Webby, eh? How's that? God, he's a grafter. You'll have you working as hard as he does, won't he? Hey, Martin, get another drink, please. Okay. Hi. What do you want, Tony? Yes, Didn't you go to Weatherfield High? Oh, yeah. I thought he was you. He was always getting into trouble. Yeah, we were the teachers. <laughs> yeah, you had a right reputation. Hey, when you took the wheels off Mr. Arkwright's car, <laughs> left it on a pile of bricks? Yeah, joke. I put them back when he asked me nicely. You went bananas, you mean. <laughs> so, 
Martin, what? if he hadn't come and say half an hour, do you think you might try and find him? You want in a glass? Of course I will. <laughs> she's a different woman when she's out of the house, you know. Can I get anybody else one? No, not for me, love. I'd better start making tracks. Thanks all the time. Yeah, walk no, no, you stay here, Al. I'm quite capable of going halfway down the street on my own. Thanks for the drink. Oh, you're welcome. Well, anytime, you know that. I do, but I'm not right good company at the moment. Uh, Hello. Well, it's understandable, isn't it, after all she's been through? Anyway, are you having another walk? Uh, no, I won't, thanks, love. Better get home, actually. No, 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 no. Yes, Kelly, can I help you? Two bottles to take out. Right, that'll be 120. Hey, I hope there's going to be some control at this party of yours. Party of mine? Now, don't make out you don't know what I'm talking about. I don't, sir. Look, I'm not saying you're not entitled. All I am saying is I hope you'll keep some order so I don't mind all sorts of damage and stuff like that. That's just right. Thanks. Look, you saw that. Was I being unreasonable? We well, sounded reasonable enough to me. <laughs> he's here, he's here! You know I've got an exam. You know I've got work to do. Oh, no, but you've been working all day. I know, and I haven't finished yet. And when I have, I'm going to need a decent night's kit. Oh, don't be so boring, Curly. Oh, that's very nice. That's just the support I need. Look, I, I did this for you. That's the only reason for you. Well, you don't know me very well, do you? Aye, aye, what's going on in here, then? You just stay out of this, will you? All right. <laughs> 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 I'm sorry, but uh, will you please leave? <laughs> <laughs> Look, will you just go, please? All right. Oh, yeah, sure. Come on, Sal. Yeah. Well, it's anyway, Well, so your brain will explode one day, and it has. So, that. Look at the state of this place. You shouldn't have done that, Curly. You shouldn't have done that! At the time I go, Paul, oh, you'd have been delighted. You didn't get much sleep then, I take it. Well, it's not the ideal place to spend the night before an exam, is it? It was your idea. Look, uh, let's just let's just forget it, shall we? But we can't just forget it. Look, I don't want to discuss it, all right? I thought the party would be a nice surprise for you. I don't want to talk about it. The most important thing to me right now is passing that exam. Have you had any breakfast? I don't want any breakfast. Right, Mrs Bishop, I'm off. Oh, uh, Mr Sugden. Yes? I, I was wondering if you might be going out tomorrow night. Oh, I see. I take it you're planning another cosy little evening in for two? Well, I, I thought I'd give Arthur a ring and ask him round for dinner to make up for his disappointment yesterday. Disappointment? Well, when he had to cancel our trip out because he was working. Look, Mrs Bishop, do you think you're doing the right thing? Yes, I do, as it happens. Now, look, I'm only thinking of you. I mean, don't you think you're making yourself look cheap? Cheap? Throw yourself at this Arthur Dabner fellow like this. Because that's what they make of it, you know, some folk. Mr Sugden, I am not throwing myself at anybody. I'm merely proposing to invite a friend to dinner. Yes, but what's he going to make of it? He won't make anything of it. And now, if you've no other observations on my private life, I take it I can safely invite him tomorrow. You must do what you think fit, Mrs Bishop. I'll never mind him down as a mate of yours. Ooh, a curly. 
the way Brute last night won't mark him down as a mate of anybody's. Ah, it's alright when you get to know him, Curly. Not under a lot of pressure lately. His exams mean a lot to him. So, what's he doing at college at his age anyway? Well, definitely used to think it's worth it. Reckons if he gets decent qualifications, he'll get a decent job. He's wasting the best years of his life, if you ask me. Yeah, well, it's his life, innit? Look, it is possible, you know, to have your brew and carry on working. You've been working on that exhaust since we come in. Beat it, dentist, haven't I? Don't you listen to anything I tell you? I hang on your every word. In that case, you'll have remembered I'm finishing an hour earlier tonight. Right. So you'll still be able to pick me no up? No problem. Oh, Mark, I know I'm only the boss around here, but I reckon if you want to go skiving off an hour early, the least you can do is ask. I don't. It'll take me half an hour at most to run showing home. I'll make it up for you when I get back, OK? Oh, like you're doing now, you mean? Right, a quick brew, then you can be on your way. The kettle's just boiled. Well, if you're twisting me arm... Hey, so what's it to be then, eh? Survived me like Rovers. I don't feel like it today, Vera, OK? You've got to have some dinner. I don't fancy the Rovers, all right? You're doing yourself no favours, you know. You don't want to let him get you down. There's only one way to deal with a fella like that. Stand your ground, give him no pleasure. Yeah, I know that either. <laughs> See you later, Vera. Right, kid. Think on what I say. Sally, look about last night. Forget about it. It's one of those things, isn't it? We understand. I'm glad somebody does. You slept on the settee last night, you know. Oh, come on, it'll sort itself out. I know you must have felt after all the trouble you've gone to and he ruined it all for you, but... Well, you can understand Curly's point of view as well, can't you? I can't, though. And he can't see mine. That's the trouble. Look, I just knocked up for my dinner. Why don't you come in? I'll make us a nice cup of tea. I don't think so. That's all well, I Well, I do. Come on, you need someone to talk to. I'll put the kettle on. We can have a nice chat. Okay. You sit yourself down, Shirley. I'll put the kettle on. Do you want a sandwich or something? Because I'm going to make one for myself. No, sir. So, what did he say this morning, then? Not a lot. He was so flaming keen to get off to this exam. Oh, yeah, but surely it's important to him, isn't it? He's made a lot of sacrifices for this. And he's not the only one, is he? What do you think it's been like for me these past 12 months? Slaving away at that factory every hour God sends, trying to scrape together enough to keep us both. Life's passing me by, Sal. This is the kind of life I want. I want to get out, have fun with me fella. Even that do we went to at my mum's, we had to leave early so Curly could get on with his rotten studying. Yeah, but once he's got college behind him, things might be different then, might they? Oh, no, it won't. Books are Curly's life. When he's not studying for his exams, he's reading any road. Learning something new. Educating himself. Trying to educate me. There's more to this than just last night, then. Oh, a lot more. He said last night that I didn't know him. Couldn't be more wrong. I know him all right. I know that him and me live in different worlds. You've got to sit down and talk to him about it. I'm sure if he knew how you felt, things would be different. One thing's for sure, Shell. You can't go on like this. So go on, then. Well, there's no else to say, Vera. Curly didn't fancy a party, so he kiboshed it. End the message. Well, it might be end at message as far as he's concerned, but, well, it's him for Shirley, that's for sure. <laughs> it's been about as lively as an hibernating hedgehog and twice as brickly. Well, I reckon that happens to be between Curly and Shirley, don't you? Yeah, but she's a friend of mine, you Look, know. Look, Martin's right. Whatever's going on between Curly and Shirley is their business, OK? Now, I've nothing more to say on the subject. All right! Just don't say it try and help, that's all. Oh, right, that's um, a grapefruit juice and a salad barn uh, cake. Yes, that's mm -hmm. right. Right, yes. you find somewhere to sit uh, and I'll deal with the order. Uh, don't mind if we join you, do you? No, no we're, we're going to leave in a minute, though. Oh. Yeah. Been house hunting again, have you? Uh, no, not today. <laughs> I got the impression that Derek was off the idea. Oh, I don't know why I should think that. Ken. Well, he certainly didn't seem to be sharing your enthusiasm. No, but as it turned out, it was quite right, wasn't it? Right. 
Well, it's much more of a buyer's market now. At least that's what Derek says. So you are still looking, then? Oh, yes, most definitely. Anyway, I'm sure Mavis didn't come in here for a, an in-depth analysis of the current financial situation. I mean, can't we think of something a bit more cheerful to talk about than that? Hey, what is the latest on Emily and her accountant friend? He certainly seems to have brought the colour back to her cheeks. Right, girls, come on. Let's go show our boss that we can't bear to be away from him. Hey, and don't you forget neither. Forget what? Do you know, it wasn't only your eyes you should have had tested. Your specs, your grades said, don't forget to pick them up when you finish here. Well, they might not be ready, Vera. But they are ready. Hey, do you want me to come with you and show you where? He doesn't need anybody to show him the way next to the red lion. He'll just follow his nose. Look, how you get there's your problem. Just pick them up, OK? Hello, Mrs. Bishop. I thought you got the afternoon off. I have. Oh, uh, so you decided to go shopping, have you? That's right. Well, you want any company? Somebody to help carry your bags? Oh, I think I can manage, thank you, Mr. Sugden. You'll have to be back soon for your crossing duty anyway. Right. Uh, by the way, uh, did you get round to uh, phoning that gentleman friend of yours about coming to dinner tomorrow? Oh, sir, I did, yes. And? He was in a meeting. I left a message for him to ring me back. And he's not been in touch? Not yet, no. So you won't have heard any more about what he was up to yesterday, then? And why should Arthur discuss his work with me? Now, if you've quite finished putting me through the third degree, I'll be on my way. See you later. So, young Jenny's pulling around a bit, then? Yeah. It's not been easy for her, kid of her age. It's not been easy for either of you? No. I just hope it doesn't affect her A-levels. She's been working so hard. It might be the best thing. Take her mind off, uh, you know. Well, I'd like to think so. Mind you, I can't see her concentrating on anything 100% till she knows what's going to happen to her dad. Look, if you want to nip off, I mean, me and Tina can manage here, you know. What a leave two defenceless women here on their own. Hey, anyone who tries it on with me will soon see how defenceless I am. Look, come on, get up, go and pick your specs up. Oh, Betty, you can see how I'm fixed. I've got to finish off here. I've got to collect my dirty glasses. I can do that, lad. Take me empties out the back, stock all these for tonight, do me cellar. Hey, Jack, you want to watch your door crack that tailor with yours? Look, when Alec went away, I told him and I promised him mm. I would look after this place as if it were my very own. Mm. All right. Well, so you've decided to come back, have you? Oh, now what's up? What's up? You went to that wholesalers an hour ago. Should have took you ten minutes at the most. Yeah, it would if you hadn't bumped into Des Ancock. Des Ancock? Oh, yeah, I used to work at my last place. He's with Weatherfield Garages now. We we're telling about something gear they've got there. Sounds like a space station compared to this place. Oh. So you fancy working there, do you? Nah, no way. It's too impersonal. You never come in contact with your customers. They hardly see the service manager. It's like a production line. Nah, give me this setup every time. Oh, well, I'm pleased to hear it. Now, if you can give us ten minutes of your valuable time... Oh, come on, boss, don't be like that. How do you expect me to be? You'll be swanning off in half an hour to pick up that bird of yours. I'm making up to you, I've told you. But well, do you fancy a brew before I crack on my clutch? I've done it. The clutch? Well, I couldn't wait all day for you, could I? You've got to realise, you're not a one-man band anymore. You really are going to have to learn to delegate. you were off work this afternoon you never said no I'm not I got your message and decided to pop round have a quick word oh a phone call would have done I only wanted to know if you were free for dinner tomorrow evening I had to see you Emily there's something I've got to say and I couldn't do it on the phone well I could but I wanted to say it to your face about what happened yesterday when I said I was working I wasn't but you'll know that already of course <sighs> Sorry, Arthur, I'm not with you. Mr. Sugden must have said something. Mr. Sugden? He saw us. Us? Me and Babs, my wife. I lied to you, Emily. But I thought it was the kindest thing to do at the time. She rang me up, you see, said she wanted to see me to talk after I had arranged to go out with you. 
I didn't know what to do, but she pressed me, said how important it was. In the end, I had no option. I see. I'm sorry, I really am. Deceit isn't part of my nature. But it was a very difficult situation. So, you met your wife? Yes. She wanted to discuss the future. The future? That's right. We talked all afternoon and... and well, at the end of the day, we decided to give it another go. To get back together again. I see. I'm sorry. Well, I knew you were still in touch with her, of course. I've enjoyed our friendship, Emily. I really have. I like to think you have, too, but... Babs, she needs me. Do understand, Arthur. You see now why I didn't want to talk on the phone. I appreciate you coming round. I must admit, I thought you'd have heard something from Mr. Sugden. He said he saw you. We exchanged a brief greeting. And as he's always made it quite clear that he didn't exactly approve of my friendship with you. He didn't say a word. Well, I'm grateful for that. At least you heard it from me firsthand. Well, I suppose I'd better be getting back. I hope I can always look on you as my friend. Thank you, Emily, for everything. I hope it works out for you. Hello, Casey's Garage. All right, Mr. Parsington. Yep, it's ready. We'll be here till about six o'clock. Well, I will anyway. Okay, see you later. Ta da. Ah, Kevin. Oh, Mr. Casey. So, what can I do for you? One of those days, eh? Uh, you could say that. Yeah, well, don't let me stop you. I just thought I'd drop in and see how things were working out. Well, where's Mark? He's, uh, he's just slipped out for a bit. On business? No, no, he's, uh, slipped out to pick up his girlfriend. I don't pay him to slip out chasing bits of skirt, Kevin. And I don't pay you to let him. Look, I put Mark in here because I reckon it'd be good for him and good for the garage. He's had a couple of years' experience. You need the help. It figures, but you've got to keep at him. It's not doing anybody any good if you let him come and go as he pleases, which he will do, given half the chance, oh. believe me. And what am I supposed to do about it? Well, you're asking me? You're the one who's supposed to be running the shop. Yeah, I know what I'd like to do, that's for sure. So what's stopping you? Oh, I would have thought that was obvious. The fact that he's my son? Oh, yeah. Get has some bearing on the situation. Oh, no. Not as far as I'm concerned. If he needs a swift kick up the backside, you give it him. If you have to nail his boots to the floor to keep him on the job, go ahead. But you're the boss as far as I'm concerned. Do you mean that? Certainly I do. You treat him just like you would any other employee. You reckon you can handle it now? I was beginning to wonder where you'd got. Too. Well, I've been down at the library most of the afternoon. My word, something smells good. Mm. Thought you'd like steak and onions tonight. I know it's one of your favourites. It's all ready. Uh, Mr. Bishop, will you just hang on a few minutes? I've got something to tell you. I've known about it since yesterday, and I've done nothing but worry myself stupid about it ever since. If it concerns Arthur Dabner, I think I can save you the trouble. But you don't know what I've got to tell you. I think I do. It's been round here. He told me you saw him yesterday. Did he now? And did he tell you he wasn't alone? He did. It was his wife he was with, actually. His wife? Mr Dabner came round to explain to me that he met his wife yesterday and they discussed their differences and they'd made it up. So the swine was married and all. How could he do such a thing to a woman? A, as caring, as trusting as yourself. He was separated, Mr Sugden. I knew that. I knew someone that didn't like him and meant to set eyes on him. Well, all right. I don't think we need to go into that now. So we've seen the last of him, then, I take it? Yes, we have. Ah, uh, well, I don't want you to think I was neglecting my duty, Mrs Bishop, not telling you I'd seen him earlier. 
But uh, I didn't know what to say, honest, I didn't. I didn't want to see you get hurt. And I know what your thoughts were on my feelings on the matter. I'm very touched, Mr Sugden. Really, I am. Now, I think the best thing we can do is to forget all about Arthur Dabner and do our best to do justice to that steak. Right then, Mrs Bissell. I'll just go and wash my hands. Oh, there's just one thing. What's that? You were looking for fresh lodgings. What? And leave you on your own at a time like this? What do you take me for? No, you can rest your mind assured on that score. No, I'm going to abandon all plans in that direction forthwith. Hey, you spent the whole afternoon working down that cellar. Do you know it's surprising how much work there is, Betty, once you get started? <laughs> it's never bothered you before. Do you know I don't know why I bother? I'm working my fingers to the bone to make life straightforward for me workmates. And what thanks do I get? Yeah, you were that busy, didn't even notice what the time was. Do you know it never entered my head, Betty? No, until it was too late to go to that optician. <laughs> right, that's 87. Cheers, thanks. And you're on there as well. Thanks. Uh, taking the weight off your feet. Yeah, go on. So, what did you say to him then when he got back? No, it was only half an hour ago. Just a matter of straightening things up. So I just bit on my tongue and thought about tomorrow. Cos his feet are not going to touch the floor, I can promise you. Hey! hey. So where were you this afternoon? Ah, no, don't ah. tell me. Somebody burst in and handcuffed you to the pumps. Fair, I have not had a spare minute this afternoon. The girls will vouch for that, will you? Yeah, you have no intentions of going for them specs. Got a yard. I mean, I was only saying to the girls how I was really looking forward being able to play my full role once again behind this bar. Ah. Well, it's a good job I went then, isn't it? Hey. Here, you can sort out with me when we get home. No, 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 no. You keep them. Put them in your bag. We'll sort them out when we get home, will we? No, we'll sort them out now. Come oh, on. Come on, Jack. Put us out of our misery. These are the frames I ordered. Of course they are. Well, come on. <laughs> Hey, you look great. What do you think, girls? Yeah, definitely. Makes him look almost intelligent. I told you Specs did something for a fella. Do you reckon? Oh, yeah, just like Michael Caine. Maybe when I, when I get used to him, like, you know. Hey, they really do something for you, you know. They make you look really distinguished. What do you think, Betsy? Yes, definitely. <laughs> it's a good job Alec's not here. Wouldn't half be upset. Alec would. Yeah, well, you never know he was the boss with you around. <laughs> Anyway, let's run to the test. Uh, see if you can get me a bottle of light without spilling any on your shoes. <laughs> oh, hey. They're dead sexy and all. You're right. Oh, yeah. Well, they'll be the last thing you take off before you get in bed, won't they? <laughs> Jack! Yeah. A bottle of light. What do you mean then, Jack? Just a coat, please, Mark. Come on, all right. Can I have a coat, please? Oh, yeah. Are you all right? Oh, yeah. Oh, Get yourself to want a drink. Uh, no, my shelf. I'll get him. I did insist. Oh, oh, fine. Oh, Jenny will have a cup. Cheers. So come on, where's Curly been then? Trying the biggest bunch of flowers he could find. Oh, oh what, for Shirley? <laughs> well, I should hope so. It'll be in trouble if they're not. Now, he's really sorry for snapping the way he did the other night. Well, I don't think we'll be seeing them in here tonight. Why not? Well, they'll be too busy making up, won't they? <laughs> Shirl? What are you doing? I'm going home, Curly. Home? This is your home. Not anymore, it isn't. Look, um, I'd like to apologise for, for the way I carried on. I, I, I was tired, I was worried about my exam, I let things get on top of me, I never gave a thought to you or your feelings or how much you put into that party. So, I, I just want to say I'm, I'm sorry. It isn't as simple as that. Well, what more can I say? Get in the party, Curly. Not just that. Um, I, I, I'm not with you. Well, poles apart, you and me. We always will be. No, no that's not true. It is. There's no point going on. Uh, hang on. Well, what about the past 12 months? Surely that must mean something to you. It's no good, Curly. We live in different <laughs> worlds, you and me. All you're interested in is books and reading and getting on in the world. I want a bit of fun in my life as well. 
want to go to parties. Get out. Enjoy myself. Well, things will be different when I finish my exams, when I finish college. It won't change the way we are, Curly. We're just two different people. Look, look. Um, I know the last 12 months haven't been easy, but, but things will change when I get a job. But we won't change. We'll still be the same people. So, we're either going to jump through hoops trying to please each other, or we're just going to drift further and further apart. I'm sorry, Curly. I've tried. I just don't see any future for us together. No, oh, hang on, hang on. It's best this way. Honest, it is. I'm glad I've seen you. Saved me writing a note. And never was much good at that, was I? I'll be in touch about the rest of my gear. Well, there must be something I can say, something I can do. <laughs> I'm sorry, Curly. Bye. Sure, you don't want to lift? No, thanks. The walk will do me good. Been a bit of a headache. Okay, suit yourself. See you later then. Oh, oh and if you do come home at dinner time, there's some fresh wild ham in the fridge. Oh, right, ta. See you, love. Sure. Oh, thanks. But it's all right, it's for me. Okay, see you later, love. Sure. I can't stop now, Vera. Hang on a minute. Well, good morning to you and all. Hello, Casey's garage. Oh, Mrs. Henderson. I oh, see. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we're a bit pulled out today, as it happens. OK, well, pop it round on your way to work. I'll have a look at it. But if it is a big job, there's no way I can get round it today. OK? I'll see you later. ta -da. Morning, boss. Yeah, I suppose it is. Just. Hey? Still morning. One of them days, eh? Missus doing your own butters again, is she? Look, it's not to do with the missus, Mark. It's to do with you. I told you to be here at eight sharp this morning. Yeah, I don't know, and I'm sorry. Honest I am, boss. You know, but I had a bit of a late night. Look, what you got up to last night, your business. I'm bothered about this morning when you should have been here half an hour since. I've got a rush job on here, three outside, and the phone's hardly stopped since they're coming. All right, I'm here now, answer. Oh, and that's supposed to make me feel better, is it? What's got into you this morning? I'll tell you what's got into me. I'm sick of you treating this place like some kind of holiday camp. Skylarking around, swanning off when it suits you, dropping in when it's convenient. You're here to work. And unless you get that into that thick skull of yours and sharpish, or well, you're wasting your time and mine, cos the way you've been behaving since you started here would have been better off on my own. At least I would have known where I stood. But all this on there. You have. So now you have decided to honour us with your presence. But see, you get stuck in, eh? And I mean stuck in. Look, I was only 20 minutes late. Yeah, that's another thing. You can make that up at dinner. Oh, hey, I said I'd meet Sharon. Oh, well, you should have thought about that when you was having your extra half hour in your pit, shouldn't you? Oh, come on, boss. You can't do that. Oh? I can't have things. Does he happen to be the boss around here? And from now on, what I say goes. You do what I tell you, when I tell you. And if you don't like it, you know what you can do. 
we start by doing the cylinder head on the Fiesta outside. And don't shift from that job till I tell you, right? This is garage. Ah, oh, Mr. Wolfenden. Up, oh, Baldwin, got a new guard duck, I say. I didn't realise there was a law against standing here. Well, I can think of better places to spend my time. I'm waiting for somebody. Oh, don't tell me you and Shirley are still arguing over that party. I don't think that's any of your concern, Mrs. Duckworth. None of my concern. I work with the girl, don't I? And the mood she were in this morning should be about as much fun as a block drain. You mean you've seen her this morning? Yeah, when she came in early this morning. And don't kid on, there's no wrong between you. The may fetch her in half an hour early. Well, it proves it, doesn't it? Do us a favour, eh? Make it up between you. Yes, yes, quarter past one. That'll be fine. Right, we'll see you there, then. Bye. We're seeing the estate agent there at quarter past one. Oh, but... you're still looking, are you, Mavis? Oh, yes. We never stop looking, just that there always seems to be some snag. Call Derek. Oh, oh no, that's <laughs> not fair, Rita. Oh, now, come on, love. You must have looked at half a dozen houses that would have been the answer to your dreams. And every time he comes up with something to put the block yeah, on. You don't just jump at the first thing, do you? I mean, there's a lot of things to consider. Oh, true. In Alfie's case, whether he could get from our front door and open up the blessed shop in ten seconds flat. <laughs> oh, well, better ring Derek. <laughs> Tell him I've arranged a view. He'll be delighted. You see, it was Derek that spotted this one. Oh. I wasn't too sure at first, but now I can see the possibilities. Mm -hmm. Where's this one, then? I think she said it's up in Kingsley Road area. Kingsley Road? Uh, up near Betty Turpin somewhere. I thought they were looking the other side. Oh, they've looked everywhere. There can hardly be a house left in Weatherfield that they haven't looked in. I'll tell you what. If they ever do find one, there's going to be a heck of a void in their life. Why? What will they do in their dinner hour? Oh. <laughs> uh, Derek, yeah, uh, well, it's only me. It's just that um, the estate agent says he will see us there at quarter past one. Thank you. Do you know what the black shiny thing is? Hey? The phone. Casey's garage. Ah, oh, Mr. Jessup. Uh, yeah, yeah, the brakes definitely needed doing. Uh, about four o'clock, I reckon. Okay, I'll see you later. Ta da. Why didn't you answer it? I was up to my armpits out there. He told me to stick with this. Look, he's trying to be funny. I'm only doing what I was told. Yeah. Well, next time the phone rings, answer it, right? You say so. I do. You're the boss. Ken, thank you. Do you know, I don't know where this morning's gone. I don't, uh, honestly. <clears throat> I don't know where this year's gone. It doesn't seem five minutes since it was Christmas. Oh, uh, I'd rather forget about our Christmas, if you don't mind. Uh, yeah, me too. <laughs> oh, sorry, yeah. You know, I was going into town, actually, but I never got there. I went to pay the papers, then I had a chat and a quick coffee with Gail, and uh, before you know it, it's dinner time. How is Gail? Oh, bearing up, you know. Well, she's getting on with her life, that's the main thing. Mind you, that cafe has been a godsend. If she'd had to sit at home day in, day out, heaven knows what state she'd be in by now. Not that she's finding it very easy, though, with two kids and a house to run and a full-time job. No. That was one pound forty. Right, thanks so much. Cheers. 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 One thing about them specs of yours, Jack, you'll be able to get a clearer picture of Tina's assets. Yes, I don't need these specs to appreciate Tina. I can tell you, I've got this sixth sense, you know, as far as women are concerned, especially them that are built like our Tina. I can feel the sparks fly between us every time she passes. Oh, yeah, and uh, she feels the same about you, does she? Well, do you know it is, don't yes. I? Ah, then. What about Mr. Tina? What does he feel about this uh, passionate encounter? Ah, well, there isn't one, you see. That's why I've got to watch my step. I mean, one wink of encouragement in her general direction should be all over, won't it? And that could prove a very dangerous situation. At your age, you're not kidding. Hello. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, <coughs> hello, I'm just smacking you up. Oh. Hi, hello. Well, we're trying to get Shirley to come across with us. Ah, well, come on, what are you having? Uh, well, I'll have a bottle of light then. I'll have same, love. Right. What's so important about Shirley coming around? Her around, is it? No, her and Curly, they've split up. Oh, not a bat. 
Not about that party business. No, not exactly, love. It just seems that that brought it to Ed. Uh, she just reckons there's no future for it. Oh, well, if that's the way she sees it, I don't see what you two can do. Doesn't seem right, does that? No, no, but you're no, you're sticking your own in, doesn't either. Look, if Curly and Shelley have got some sorting out to do, it's best to leave them to get on with it by themselves without you two. All right, good lad. Shirley, Shirley, we've got to talk. Let go, Kelly. I've nothing to say to you. I've got plenty to say to you. Why can't we just go home and talk about it? There's nothing to talk about. Wait, wait, what's going on? I'm trying to have a word with Shirley. Do you want to talk to him? No. There's your answer, Sunshine. Thanks. Shirley! You heard what she said. Look, I've got to talk to her. I've got to try and make her understand. Not on my premises, you don't. I don't want you harassing my staff. Now, come on. Don't let me catch you inside anywhere again, all right? Got it? Well, it seems to be all they said it was, maybe, certainly from the outside. It's such a nice road, Derek. Very quiet and select. Do you know, Mavis? I think our long search may be over. <laughs> this feeling I've got. <laughs> provided the inside's up to scratch, of course. And provided they're prepared to meet us on the price. Price? But we know the price. Uh, we know the price they're asking, Mavis. But that's not necessarily the price we're prepared to pay. Oh. Now, I know about these things, Mavis. Leave it all to me. It is a buyer's market, after all. When did that estate agent say it be here? Quarter past. He's late. That gives us a psychological advantage for a start. <laughs> but if he's doing what you asked him, I thought that was what you wanted. It's the way he's doing it, isn't it? Exactly to the flaming letter. You know, he wouldn't even answer the phone this morning because I haven't told him to. Well, there's only one way to deal with him then. Hey? Play him in his own game. If he wants to behave like a five-year-old Kev, you treat him like one. Don't let him see he's getting better at Yeah, don't worry. I've got to measure the mark flaming case, eh? Well, I better be getting back. I told him this morning to keep his head down till we get back. Probably having a kip somewhere now. You just remember what I told you. Uh, oh, you're not going already, are you? Yeah, Kev's got to get back. Oh, it's my chance, I know. Oh, sorry, mate. See you later, eh? All right, sit down. He's had a very trying morning. Yeah, he's not the only one, is he? It's hey. Martin. Uh, well, I might as well have a half now, please. Okay. No, lag. Uh, I don't want to be breathing ale fumes all over job centre birds now, do I? So, you haven't got yourself fixed up yet, then? Uh, no, not yet, no. I thought there'd been a lot of work around for a bright lad like you. Well, there's plenty of work, yeah. I just want someone with prospects, though. You know what I mean? Mm. I think I'll hang on for a couple more weeks. I don't suppose you're looking for anyone just now, are you? No, I'm sorry, I'm not. But, uh, keep me here, Dad, all right? Okay, cheers. That's Thanks a lot. There you go. Hiya. 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 Right. Yeah. Sal told me you were in here. Want a drink? Um, no, I'm not stopping. Oh, what is this? I know I'm on the door. I can afford a drink for someone, you know. I'll have a slim wine tonic, then. OK. Slim lane, please. OK. Sir. Oh, Hang on a moment. I want to ask you a favour. Oh, here we go. Go on, then. Is there any chance you can borrow your dad's car tomorrow afternoon? <clears throat> I can't see why not. Why? What exactly did you have in mind? Well, I've had a letter from my dad. He wants to see me. <sighs> well, Risley. Um... Well, he can hardly come here and see me, can he? <laughs> well, how about it? Well, I don't know. The last time I said, yeah, we ended up being surrounded by flashing blue lights, didn't we? Are you sure you want to go? Yes, I am sure. Look, whatever's happened, Martin, he's still my dad, isn't he? I'm going anyway, whether you take me or not. It's just that remand centre isn't somewhere I'm in the habit of visiting, is it? I'd rather go with a friend than on my own. And you are my best friend. Well, one of them. Well, you certainly know how to twist a fella's arm, don't you? Thanks, Martin. I knew I could rely on you. Thanks very much, Thank love. Ta-da. Oh, thanks, so. Well, come on, what's up? You've had a face as long as Southport here since you came back. House not what you expected? Oh, it was more than we expected. It was beautiful. It was just what we both wanted. Well, what's your problem? Derek's put in an offer 2,000 below the asking price. So? Well, it might as well be 20,000 for all the chance we have of having it accepted. I mean, the estate agent said the price was rock bottom as it was. 
see. Mavis, though, don't you think it's time you ask yourself, does Derek really want to move? Managed to check that radiator for leaks. Yes. Well, you better doing it, haven't you? Yes, sir. Certainly, sir. Would that be after I finish this or do you want it done now? Immediately. We'll do after. As long as you don't forget. Not much chance to let me do that, is there? Not today. Before you go home tonight, you can clear this workbench up as well. Wow, what's up with it? What's up with it? It's a flaming slaggy. That's what's up with it. Look at it! Oh, look, that hasn't been cleaned down for weeks look, by the look of it. I don't want any arguments. I just want it cleaned, OK? And as it looks like a good half hour to me, you better get your skates on if you want to get out tonight. Half an hour? No way. I did learn something in my last job, you know. You crazy beggar! Do you know what sort of damage you can do with these things? Look, I'm sorry. I shouldn't have done that. No. You shouldn't have done a lot of things today, but it hasn't stopped you, has it? Like what? Like what? Like carrying on the way you've been doing. Behaving like a little spoiled kid who can't have his own way. Working exactly to the letter. Getting right up my nose. Well, I've had it, Matt. I've had it up to here. You started it? Yeah. And I'm finishing it as well. I don't want you in this garage a minute longer. You fired us from now. Hey, now hang on. Just grab your things and get out of my sight, OK? Now hang on a minute. You can't do that. No? Well, why not? Because Daddy owns the place. Well, that's just where you got it wrong, Matt. Your dad told me to treat you the same as I would anybody else. I won't put up with it. I go, you giving me today off anyone. So you fired, and that's it. Now out. There you go. Thanks very much. Cheers. Bye. Oh, Martin. What? Um, just a minute, love. Um, about tomorrow afternoon, you and Jenny. Well, she told you about it. Well, she did mention it, yes. Look, I don't want to interfere between the pair of you, but do you think you're being fair to her? Fair? Well, I know you've got a lot of time on your hands at the moment, but, you know, she's supposed to be working very hard for her A-levels, and they are getting close. Well, I'm not with you, so. Well, she won't get much work done if she's gallivanting round countryside with you, will hey, she? Hey, hang on a minute. It was Jenny's idea. It was her that asked me. The last place I want to go is Risley. Risley? So that's where she's going. Mm. You didn't know, did you? No. No, I didn't. Oh, what have you got to lose just by talking to him? I don't want to talk to him, Vera. How many times have I got to tell you? Leave her alone, Vera, can't you? Well, do you want to come for a quick drink before you go home? No, Tart. I'll see you in the morning, eh? Oh. Shirley! Oh, no, don't you ever give up? No, not where you're concerned. Look, we have got to talk. No, Curly. Look, all I've been doing is thinking about what you said when you left. Let go of me arm, Look, Curly. you've got it all wrong, you know. I said let go! Can't you see she doesn't want to talk to you? You stay out of this, Ivy. Come hey. Let uh, go! You better do as she says. I said stay out of it. We have got to talk. For God's sake, Curly, change the record. Can't you get it into your head that I've got nothing more to say to you? You don't seem to realise what I've been going through. Oh, what you've been going through? It wasn't easy for me to leave that flat, you know. But I did. And as far as I'm concerned, that's it. I just want to get on with the rest of my life, so just stop festering me and leave me alone. But you can't just wipe out the past 12 months just like that. Oh. Take me home, Don. I think you better, Lord. Shirley. Shirley! Look, lad, I think you better get off home. She seems to have made it perfectly clear where you stand. See that? OK, love. Right, come on, girls. Stop, 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 Good job done with her. Oh, but it's a nasty, couldn't it? Yeah. What could? Curly and Shirley just had a great big bust up outside. Don's had to run her home. Well, he's trying to talk to her, you know, but she don't want to know. What are you having? I think I'll just have a tonic water here, please. Yeah, uh, a light help for me. Right. Listen, shall we take him into the speech? Oh, OK, then. Bring him over, Jack. OK, darling, I will do, yes. Oh, oh sorry. Oh. Perhaps I'd better have a word with him. Who? Curly! Curly? Yes, something like this could put him off women altogether. Well, that's his good luck, isn't it? You have a very cynical attitude towards the opposite sex, Jack. Yes, it's just an unfortunate experience he had a long time ago. Like what? Marriage. Oh. So what's the boss said about all this, you know? Hey, Not Mr Big, Mr Casey. Mm. I'm the boss. He's made that very clear. 
proud of you, love. You've given him every chance. He's just chucked it back in your face. I know that. He's given him the elbow, you know. Look, Tom Casey told me to treat Mark the same as would anybody else. He pays me to run a garage. He's not a flaming playground. He's just a skiving, objectionable little toe rag. All right, it's not me you've got to convince, is it? It's his old fella. Yeah. Well, I won't be losing any sleep on that score, I can assure you. Now, do you mind if we drop it? Only I've had enough for one day, and I've had enough of Mark flaming Casey to last me a lifetime. He did want to see me, to tell me personally, but uh, he got called away at the last minute. No, it was Ray Griffiths who broke the news, actually. News? About consolidating my career, maybe. Placing me on the higher echelon of management, officially. You've been promoted. Uh, no, not promoted, but my executive status has been confirmed beyond any doubt. All my loyalty, hard work and devotion to duty has been rewarded at last. Pay rise. Well, as good as. Oh. Better, in fact. I'm sorry, Derek, I'm not with you. I have been invited to join the executive pension scheme, Mavis. There. What do you say to that? Well, I'm very pleased for you. Of course I am. Mind you, Mavis, there are going to have to be a few changes. Changes? Well, for a start, I hardly think a one-bedroom flat over a paper shop is quite the right place for an executive of my standing to be living. <laughs> Actually, Derek, I've been thinking about that house that we saw today. Oh, yes. Well, I mean, it was just right, and we both felt at home there. So, what with your marvellous news about the pension scheme... Executive pension scheme. Executive yeah. pension scheme. Don't you think we could just offer them the asking price? <sighs> Not much point, Mavis. Not now. Not much point? No, the estate agent rang just before I went in to see Ray Griffith. It's been sold. Oh! Oh, I'd set my heart on that hat. <laughs> well, I don't see what there is to laugh at, Derek. I'm laughing, Mavis, because it's been sold to us. He phoned to say our offer has been accepted. <gasps> Honestly. Honestly, we can be in our own home within a month. Oh, <laughs> I don't know what to say. <laughs> oh, just wait till I tell Rita. <laughs> Do you know, she reckoned that you put in a lower offer because she didn't want to move. Well, that shows how much Rita knows, doesn't it? Oh, we're a different breed, us business executives. Oh. <laughs> No, Derek, it's at times like this when I think I'm married to the most wonderful man in the world. Do you know, Mavis, it's at times like this. I think you're right. <laughs> Hiya. Hello, Lou. Thought you were staying at Joanne's. No, we've done all the work we're going to do. She's off out now. You're not going with her? No, I thought I'd have a bath in an early night. Something special on tomorrow? Not particularly. Jenny, why didn't you tell me? Tell you what? About going to see your dad. How did you know? Martin told you. Now, don't you go blaming him. He thought I knew. He couldn't see any reason why you didn't tell me. I thought you'd be upset. Because you had a letter from your dad? That you were going to visit him? Yeah. I am, but not about that. I'm upset because you didn't tell me. I thought you and I weren't going to have any secrets from each other. I really did think it was for the best, Rita. I did. I thought you'd try and stop me. Yeah, well, I'm not sure you know what you're letting yourself in for. A remand centre can be quite an eye-opener, you know. It might have changed you, Dad. Yeah, but I've got to go, Rita. He wants me to. Yes, I know. You're not going to try and stop me? No. No, I'm not, love. You'll have to decide what's the right thing to do. He's still his daughter. Thanks, Rita. I'll go run my bath. Dad might need. Beside what? Uh, 
shirt, socks, underwear. You can only take clothes. Oh, and tobacco. He doesn't smoke. I know he doesn't smoke. Oh, hankies. Right, I'm off now. All right, then. You know, there must be something else I can take. Do you think he'll need any money? Jenny, are you going to be all right? It'll be probably safer in a remand centre than it is outside in the street, isn't it? I mean, nobody's going to mug me, are they, with prison warders lurking around all over the I place? I didn't mean that. I meant having to go to a place like that. Well, I'm not looking forward to it. If I hadn't got involved with your dad, none of this would have happened. If you wouldn't have got mixed up with me in the first place, then you would have been nearly throttled to death, would you? If. Such a little word. If I hadn't been born, then... Don't say that. Never say that again. See you later. See ya. Draw, love. Tra. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. I, I can. Uh, are you in an executive pension scheme? Uh, no, no, I'm not. Oh, well, Derek is. Really? Yeah, well, not quite yet, but it soon will be. He just has to have a, a routine medical examination, which I'm sure he'll pass with the flying colours. Oh. Oh, <laughs> right. um, I'm, yeah, I'm in an ordinary pension scheme. Hmm, but, I mean, you are an editor. An executive. Ah, I see. So you think I ought to be in an executive yeah. pension scheme right there? Yes. Oh, right. Well, I'll, uh, I'll definitely look into it. <laughs> <laughs> right, bye. Did you hear any of that? What? I was just telling Ken that Derek's been invited to join his firm's executive pension scheme. Has he? Well, that's very good. <laughs> oh, it's all too much, Rita. I mean, Derek reaching for the stars and his job and a house in very real prospect at last. I don't know when I felt so optimistic about life. I just wish things would get better for you. You just keep being optimistic for both of us. Morning. Something wrong? I'm just trying to weigh you up some. Oh. And have you done? Well, you definitely took me at my word, didn't you? Oh, yeah. I tend to do that. You said it was the boss and not to take any nonsense off him. I know. But sacking him is a bit strong. I didn't exactly tell you to sack me on, son, Look, did I? I had no alternative. He's been trying it on ever since he started here. Coming in late, leaving soon, acting big, taking the mickey, chatting up birds on the phone, you name it. Sounds like Mark does that. Now you're saying I shouldn't have fired him because he's the owner's son. No, I'm not saying that at all. Mind you, definitely frightened him, that's a fact. He never even went out last night, which must be some sort of a first for our Mark. <laughs> he just sat about looking sorry for himself. His mother thought you must have thumped him as well. She were all for calling the police, then firing you. I never touched him. I know you didn't. Anyway, what'll we do now? Let him stew for a week. See if he's learned a lesson. Then what? Well, you can commute the sentence, can't you? You reinstate him, on the strict understanding that he behaves himself in future, of course. There's no way. You what? He stays fired. Oh, now, come on, Kevin. You've acted like a boss, asserted your authority. You've given the kid a fright. Don't overdo it. Don't let power go to your head. Look. I can't take any more of him. He's not going to change. He's... He's like he is. And if he comes back, then it's me through the door. Take your pick. You told me to run the place, well, I'm running it. Maybe I've made a mistake, Kevin. About you. Hey, well, he's here again. Looks like he hasn't moved since this morning. Oh, don't be stupid, Vera. He must have. He's not nailed to the floor. Well, poor lad's obviously in a state. Yes, a lovesick state. It's not my fault. See the ugly faces still there in the window? We'll tell him to keep off my premises, otherwise I'll have him done for unlawful trespass. OK, Ellie.
you coming with you? Don't think I'd be too pleased to see you, would you? <laughs> it has been, has it? <laughs> well, thanks all the same. Right, well, I better go. Mm -hmm. Soon be over anyway. You're only like a quarter of an hour, aren't you? For God's sake, Matt, I'm going to see me dad. through all this red tape, Mavis, as befits a budding executive. You haven't heard a word I've been saying, have you? Hmm? Yes, yes I did. You're sorry you're late, it's all right. Don't worry about it, forget it. Look, I know you're upset about Jenny going to that place, but something else is bothering you. Rita. Yes, yes, I am upset. Of course I am no place for a girl of her age. No, but she had to go and see him, didn't she? He's a dad. I know, I know that. I know, it's just... What? You know Alan nearly as well as I do. You know what he's capable of. The lies he tells. What if he turns her against me? I think that'll be worse than anything. How can he do that? Easy. His lies don't sound like lies. I brought you some clothes, you know, some underwear and stuff. Uh, and some money. Do you need some money? Well, there's not a lot to spend it on in here, is there? No, I suppose there isn't, is there? Shame. Thanks, anyway. And well, thanks for coming, Jane. It's nice to see you again. Really awful. Well, it's not exactly a five star hotel. What's the food like? It's all right. We could do with taking a bit of weight off anyway. You do look a bit thinner. <laughs> I was, um, I was Rita. She's recovering. Has she said anything about? You know what happened? Well, no. 
I didn't rob her, you know. I mean, it was a building society that I cheated. And I'd have paid them back too, if I'd had the time. I'm not bothered about that, Dad. You could have killed her. But that wasn't me, was it? I mean... I don't know what happened, but... It wasn't me. I mean... I've never laid a finger on you, have I? Jenna, I want you to do me a really big favour. Okay, I want you, I want you to talk to Rita and ask her to play down what happened. Okay, um, tell them that uh, it was, you know, domestic harm, you know, and that, uh, that she was more shocked than her, you know, something like that. You see, because, well, if. If she says that when I come up in court next time, um, well, I might even get bail and be able to get out of this place. I mean, perhaps, I don't know, perhaps we could even get a flat together, you and me, you know, like we did before. Will you ask her, Jen? Because, um, I think I'll go mad if I have to stay in here much longer. Well, is he hypnotising you or what? Hey, Who was me? Listen, couldn't you just go and have a word with the lad, shall I? I mean, what would he cost you? It's not my fault if he wants to make a public exhibition of himself. It isn't. Hey, will we ever like that one, dear thing? <laughs> Very likely. Listen, I'm off back to work, though. Yeah, right, love. See you, tea time. Hello. You know what, I think I should have a word with him. Man to man, put him straight in a few things. Do you think that's wise? Of course it is. I'm the man with the experience, aren't I? Yeah, hang on a minute. Look, do you think I better? Oh, God. Curtly, mate. Don't you think you're going about this the wrong way? I mean, studying moping, looking like a wet weekend. I mean, you should be supping champagne, celebrating a very lucky escape. You're as free as a bird, lad. You should be looking for a beach with a load of pebbles on it. Are you listening to me, Curly? Curly, lad. Well? Well, what can you do when the lad won't listen to an expert? <laughs> Can I do something for you? No, just passing. I'm all right. Until that. I believe my dad was in this morning. Yeah, he was. What did he have to say? Oh, a lot. Like what? Aye, give me a right sub story. Pleaded with me to give you your job back. Reckon you were suicidal. Me, suicidal. Rubbish. You didn't say I could have my job back, did you? No way. Cheers for that. I'm well short of this poxy dump. Yeah, that's what I thought. And I mean, I've got it made now, haven't I? Have you? Yeah. My dad buys a garage, plus I am my new. And it sticks me in it, right? Thinking it should keep me off the streets and out of trouble. Only then you go and sack me. It wasn't my fault, Dad. I forget me, Mum. Honest, it wasn't. He just doesn't like me. You're Iron Man Kevin. Oh, and that's what you told him, is it? I had to tell him something. I couldn't tell him you sacked me because you thought I was a layabout. My mum wouldn't have believed it anyway. So I'm laughing, aren't I? It wasn't my fault, Mum. Blame me, Dad. Yeah, well, I'm glad you're happy. I really and truly am. I've got one problem, though. What's that? Whether well, they go for a game of snooker, go mad with a credit card. Well, life's tough, innit? Just gotta keep smiling, though, Kev. Be good. Uh, Mark? Yeah? You can have your job back if you want. You miss me, don't you, Kev? Go on, admit it. I miss your flaming spiel. You're incredible. Absolutely incredible. I'll tell you what, I'll do you a favour. Go and put the kettle on. Get in out this rain. I 
can assure you, Mavis, if things don't go smoothly and quickly, I'll want to know the reason why. I'm sure you will, Gary. I'm not going to be the victim of official inertia, professional sleeping sickness. I quite agree with you, Derry. I'll give them all a month. And if we're not comfortably ensconced in our new house by then, I'll do the conveyancing myself. Probably more efficiently and certainly more cheaply. I'm quite sure you could, Derry. Home at six. Mm, I'll have a tea ready. Bye. Yeah. Bye, Rita. Bye. Oh, one item overlooked in our lunchtime agenda for discussion. What's that? Jogging. Jogging? I must be in tip-top form for my executive pension medical, Mavis. And if I'm going to be as fit as a flea, I think you should aspire to the same heights, don't you? I mean, when... Um, when we're together in, in private, we don't want you feeling physically inadequate, do we? It wouldn't be conducive, would it? <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs> One thing about Derek. <laughs> Once he gets into his stride, he doesn't do things by halves. No, he doesn't, does he? Isn't Jenny taking a long time? Well, she's probably stopped for a bite to eat with Martin somewhere. Yeah. Look, I'll go and make us a cup of tea and we can finish off those cream buns that I made yesterday. <laughs> I can't see Derek sanctioning cream buns in the foreseeable future. They didn't have a warrant out for the arrest after all. They're not very efficient, the fuzz, are they? A bit pathetic. Well, I saw him. How was he? Not very good. Is he ill? No, it's not that. It's just... Well, he hates it in there. It's a terrible place, Rita. Still, he'll have to get used to it, won't he? Still, my dad hasn't changed a bit. No, I don't follow you. You know what? He never once asked me how I was, or how I was coping. Not once. Well, he probably knows you're all right living with me. Yeah, well, he could have asked. Yes, he could have asked. I know he's got troubles. He was very keen to tell me about them. Help me, Jenny. I'm desperate, Jenny. I shouldn't be in here. I'm innocent. Hasn't changed a bit. He can't be a self in there. That's the point, though. He is himself. Same himself who did what he did to you. And to me. Just for himself. If he'd have only said he was sorry. Did he mention me at all? Not a word. Too busy feeling sorry for himself. There. I'm not looking. I read in a magazine once, you know, about this uh, widow of a captain who drowned at sea. Anyway, they had this house on sands, and forevermore she kept gazing at the cruel sea. I wish you'd shut up, Vera. Oh, he's still there, kid. I've seen him. Surely, don't you think you could have a word with him, you know? Talk to him, listen to him, yeah. whatever. She's gone to make it up with her, eh? and that's sweet. <laughs> I hope that is what she's going to do. Don't be daft. Come in. Come on, shut the door behind you. I've not changed into a, a blood-sucking monster overnight. Look, Kira. I knew you were coming. I could sense it. Kira, Look, me. before you say anything, let me say my piece, eh? All right. Well, first off, I'd just like to say how much I've missed you. I mean, living together all that time, a year, well, you, you occupied a lot of my space. Well, all of it. A and suddenly, you were gone. And it was like, it was like you died. And every day, I kept seeing this ghost walking past the window. It was very, very spooky. 
I didn't mean to hurt you, Curly. Oh, you haven't? Well, a bit. But it, it's made me think, Cheryl, about us. Curly. Look, let I... me finish. And I'm, I'm one of the things that kept cropping up while I was thinking was, well, what's Shirley getting out of all this? And I have to admit, not a lot. Well, that was not true, not at first. Not at first, no. It was brilliant at first, but most things are. And then we got complacent. Well, I, I did. I slipped into the, uh, the old pipe and slippers routine. <laughs> and I have to admit, I enjoyed it. It was comfortable. But, but our relationship, it has, has to grow, it has to develop. A relationship, it, it's a living thing. Which brought me to, to my great idea. What idea? We should get married. Married? It's a logical progression, Cheryl. People, they fall in love and they live together in a kind of experimental marriage and then they do get married. That's the whole point. The experiment hasn't worked. Of course it has. It hasn't. It has for me. It hasn't for me. Well, why? Where hasn't it worked for you? Oh, it not of course. Please, Shirley, tell me where have I gone wrong because I don't know. There's lots of reasons. I'll change. I'll do anything you want. Listen to me. You were right. I am dead. I feel dead about us. I don't know why. It's just happened. Not because of anything you've done. And not because of anything you should have done. It's just happened, and I'm sorry. You've met someone else, haven't you? No, Kelly, I've not. Then why? I told you why. As best I can. There's nothing else I can say. Nothing. Please leave me alone. It's over, Curly. Finish. in the step. I'm trying, Derry, but we mustn't overdo it. One lap and you're jiggered. Shame on you, my girl. Oh, look at that dog. Oh. 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 Stare it in the eye, Mavis. Let it see who's master. I doubt I've convinced it. All part of the fun, Mavis. The adventure. Oh, Derek, you carry on. I'm going to take a breather. Very well. In top shape, would you say? Man in the prime of life? Ready to tackle the executive ladder? Oh, definitely. <laughs> Sebastian Cole. <laughs> oh, take it steady, Derek. Remember the health assessments tomorrow. You, you don't want to go spraying anything or get past your peak. <laughs> oh, and be careful of that dog. Come here, Miss. Come here, lady. Come here. Lady. Oh, really? Some people have no control over their dogs. Curl is not stable, though, is there? Well, it's all that studying, isn't it? But that's not the point. Who's seen him since Shirley called him? Well, we certainly haven't. Exactly. That was days ago. Oh, what's he doing up there? Beats me. Makes you wonder. It's a gas oven, isn't it? Hey, that's a point. I've had the bill, you know. His meter will need emptying. Oh, Alf! What I mean was, well, you don't think he might... Break into it? No, no, he's not that type, no. You don't think he might? Alf, I'm talking about doing away with himself. Hey. Come on. The lad's had a crushing blow. I mean, he's been down on his knees and still Shirley spurned yeah, him. Yeah, but he don't do things like that. Crying out loud, what's that? Oh, well, I don't know the tune, but well, at least it's a sign of life. Oh, it's Shirley's record. Well, Shirley's left him, hasn't she? Well, don't you see? He's pining, poor love. He's playing her music. Well, I don't care whose music it is. The walls won't stand that. And neither will my lugs. 
Couples these days, I don't know. They're planning to divorce, you know, while folks are still chucking confetti. Ah, uh, I come to think of it, Betty, when I look back, I don't know why I didn't do a runner out of that vestry door, down mm. the road like a dose of salt. Mind you, Curly lit him more, you know, cos it was Shirley was the owner. You know, uh, I hardly dare ask, but has such a thing as a newspaper arrived? So. Uh, oh, <coughs> lovely. Even some print left on it, I see. Oi, don't, don't take that. I've only just made my horses out. Tough luck. Yeah, but can't you tear a little bit out? I've not had time to put my bet on, have I? No, I can't. The crossroad's on the back. Uh, ah. <coughs> We've done the crossroad during tea break. Well, that puts the tin lid on it. What a flipping life. Oh. I may as well go back to bed. Oh, missing Alec, eh? Ah. What do you think we should club together and buy us something that reminds her of him? A what? Garden gnome. Wait, you wicked devil. Brother, you. <laughs> Sorry, love. This beat group, you see, the landlord's letting them rehearse. We're having it stopped, though. Look, it's going to have to be a showdown, you know. It can't go on like this, can it? Oh, yes, it can. These states go playing on and on with this reverse thing. Where's all this din coming from? That's no way to encourage trade, not unless you want these punk rockers. Right, that's it. Hold the fort. I've not much choice, have I? This isn't it Sally's day off? Hey, now, watch them stairs. Don't go getting yourself in a state, Alpha. It's no good for him, you know, all these shenanigans with his dicky ticker. It's your tenant, is it? Well, Mr Roberts wants to be wary. Fought like young Watts need careful handling. Nature's not blessed him like it has some of us. Woman's all could crack him wide open. Meatballs. What? Where are they? Oh, down there. Here, I say, Curly, hey! Doing there? Do we have to have all this din? You're driving for crackers. Trade's going to pot. Hey, 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 hey! What's all the shouting for? It's all this noise, lad. Oh, oh I was just playing a few of my tapes. Uh, they, they were Shirley's. Yes, yes, well, we can understand that. But does it have to be so loud? I mean, half Weatherfield's got a headache. Oh, it does dulls the pain. Yeah, well, I can understand that as well. But look, you're going to have to pull yourself together, lad. I hope you're not making a mess in there. No, no, I'm, I'm, well, I'm not spring cleaning. No, well, I don't expect you to, but you've all got obligations, you know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, got to be kept clean yeah, in there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and there's the rent and all. When I wake up in the morning... Go on, be a devil. A night on the tiles now and again. There's no like it for getting rid of the blues, is there? Well, you're tempting me, but not just yet. That's a quid, love. Oh, stick it on me, Bill. Where have all the ravers gone, as the poet said? Even Stella Rigby won't bite. That her at White Swan? I thought you were good, mate. She's gone very cool, asked Stella. Mm. I think it must be that Charlie Bracewell. Charlie who? That bundle of fun we had waiting on. Mm. Alex, old chum, Stella poached him. She never noticed the government health warning, though long past his sell-by date with Charlie. Oh, morning, ladies. Hello, dear. Hello, dear. Maybe it's on early lunch, is she? Early lunch? More like early bath. I mean, she's been in no fit state. I mean, she can't take the top off a toffee jar without getting twinges. It's our new routine. It is rather strenuous. Aye, aye. Trying for a family, are you? <laughs> no, not at all, no. I'm in training for my health assessment. It's a nuisance, but executive responsibility does make its demands. One has to be fit. <laughs> Bye, Eric. He's a lad and a half. Have they no plans to shift? Oh, yeah, yeah, they've got their hands on a semi. Up uh, Kingsley Road area, you know, near Betty Turpin. A semi, size of Derrick's head. They'll need book house. Draco. Sure Oh, he made a point of it, Mavis. He singled me out. Aha, Mr Wilton, he said. You're looking very fit and alert these days. This was DP himself. Uh-huh, on his way to the boardroom, surrounded by his minions. <laughs> I happened to be coming out of accounts. I was, um, I was doing a breathing exercise when suddenly I felt this clap on the back. <laughs> it was DP. <laughs> did you tell him we'd been jogging? Oh, I certainly did. Good idea, he said. There's far too much flab around the place. I'll have to join you, he said, one of these fine mornings. 
the looks I got from his entourage. <laughs> Derek, you don't think that perhaps he's well <laughs> sort of sending you up? Maybe. This tendency to belittle my status can be very dismaying. I mean, why on earth should he want to make fun of me? Well, just from what you say, it sounds as if he can be rather sarcastic. Look, he okayed my application for the executive pension scheme. Mm, I know. Well, don't you get the implications? Well, I suppose it means more security, more status. Exactly. DP and myself will have a similar status rating. It'd be my colleague rather than my chief. I reckon your mate wants to be careful. He's going to find himself out in street. Bag and baggage road is going on. Yeah, well, I reckon he's had a rough deal. Yeah, well, I'll grant you that, but he's a bit of a lemon when it comes to birds. I try to give him a bit of advice. Hey, Lips. Hey, when you've got a minute. Yes, my Hiya, love. Um, same again, Ivy. Yes, please, love. Is, uh, she only said out about her and Kayla. <laughs> you tell him, man. Uh, well, it seems that uh, Shirley told him it were all over between. Uh, and then he proposed. Uh, and she turned him down. We'll put it that way, what would you think? I think he's had a rough deal. You're joking, Kevin. Come on, she was fair enough with lad. Look, he thought a lot about that girl, and he put up with a lot for her. And for my money, she'd give him a right kick in the teeth. Well, that's it. Uh, hello, Paul. Great. Hey. What can I get for you, Paul? Oh, I'll sample a pint of your best bitter, if I may. Oh. Field trip, is it? Here with your little twig, testing how much water we're putting in the ale? <laughs> Could be. Is uh, Alec back yet? Or as he fell foul of the Ayatollahs? Oh, God forbid. No, I'm stuck here on my little lonesome. Not even a call from Stella to lighten the day. I've been wondering what I've done. Oh, well, I'll give it you in a word. Or rather, two words. Charlie Bracewell. <laughs> No point in me giving her a bell. No. And here I am, stuck here. No man, no pal. It's the dog's life. It does sound great, my dear. Are you still getting around, you know, doing the clubs? Causing havoc with all those innocent little strippers Stella tells me about? I do my best to bring them back in the church. Oh. <laughs> there you go. Point of fact, I'm out tonight. Jungle Club. Auditions. One of Alex's competitors giving his turn to the shop window. Do. And I'm stuck at home doing my knitting. Hey, you may not believe this, but Alec did ask me to pop in now and then. You know, see how you're behaving yourself. I'm being a very good girl. Could be in line for a medal, unfortunately. Hey, do you see what I see? In from the White Swan, Stella Rigby's husband. <laughs> he just wandered in and Madam started flirting straight up. Oh, she's toying with him. She can't stand the fellow. He wears trousers, doesn't he? Oh, she'll not have Paul Bigby, not after what she's heard about him from there, Stella. Mm. That could be part of the attraction, love. <laughs> what else can I do? I've been up to see the lad. It's like talking to a stone wall. That boy is beyond reason. I was um, passing. I felt I had to come in. It's not Norman, is it, making such a ghastly row? Who do you think it is, the Luton Girl Squire? It's been like this all morning. It's more than flesh and blood can stand. Have you not spoken to him about it? It's just, just thing goes through, love. Well, I'm sure if you approached him with a little diplomacy... Diplomacy? Emma, Alf's practically been on his knees. I have, yeah, and I got the door slammed in my face. I mean, if there's anything you think you can do, I'll be very grateful. Oh, he must be asleep or something. I mean, no human being could stand that at close quarters. Oh. Oh, well, thank heaven for that. Yeah, well, don't count your chickens. He could just be changing the tape or something. Maybe he's taken something. What do you mean? Well, like a tranquilizer or something. I mean, they can be dead like, aren't they? Maybe he's passed out. Well, Audrey's right, you know. I mean, you don't like to say these things, but he was looking very depressed, to say the least. Oh, I'm sure you're exaggerating. Norman. Norman, please. We all understand. We just want to help Norman. Joy. Not a 
sound. Well, he's in there. If you go well, into I, it. I wonder if we should contact his family. Well, hey, well from what I've seen of them, that would be fatal. I mean, he'd go right round the twist. Well, if he's not demented. He's simply upset. Yeah, well, there's a limit, isn't there? Right, come on, we know you're in there. Alf, Let's be having you. Alf, Alf, please. You're not dealing with a child. Norman's a sensitive young man who suffered a shattering blow. Norman, we don't want to interfere. We're just worried. Norman? Have you got a key? Well, he's got it bolted, hasn't he? Well, could you maybe break the door down? The costly things is doors. Well, you don't think we ought to call the police? I mean, he could do himself an injury. Yeah, so could I. Norman, are you all right? Are you getting enough to eat? All we need is yes or no. Bye. Oh, dear. Ow! Did he make an appearance? Now, come on, did he say out? Not a peep. Oh, well, it's better than it was earlier, anyway. Mind you, at least then we knew he hadn't done away with himself. I mean, now. Oh, I think it's better if we don't dwell on that aspect. Well, I don't want to be morbid, Emily, but I did hear a bump, like a chair fell over or something. Oh, blimey, don't say stand on furniture now. Well, at least it's a sign of life. They stand on a chair, don't they? And they kick it away. If only we could see what he's doing. You haven't a ladder. I mean, if we could get up to I'm the window... I'm not going up no ladders. Anyway, he's got curtains drawn. Well, if you ask me, it's either the police or the fire brigade. Well, we considered that, but it could be very embarrassing. I mean, if Norman were just to sleep, but on the asleep. other hand... Oh, you can see, then, have you? The ladder's still in the land of the living, or what? Mrs Bishop, I did shopping this morning. Alf asked me to help. Oh, well, if it's a case of storming the barricades, I'm fit. Now, that is typical. It won't talk to us, but it will inflict that on us. That's just madness. That is mockery and defiance. Well, this is my property, and I can have him out, and I'm going to. I'm going to read town hall. No, Alf, don't do anything hasty. Can't you see? It's just his way of saying, I'm all right. Emily, love, we know he's like a son to you, but honestly, summit's got to be done. I'll keep my eyes skinned. Beg your pardon? I'll watch his every movement. Any funny business, I'll sniff it out. I suppose that could be useful. I'll take up my duties right now. A flask of coffee would be appreciated, Mrs Bishop. Yes, right. And don't worry, if he makes for the river, I'll be right on his tracks. I'm saying nothing. Hey. Oh, Hi. afternoon, Betty Love. <laughs> How's the hot pot trade? Oh, all go. And I'm needed tonight. No wonder my cones are giving me a bit of jip. Hey, you still have them plasters? We do that. will not mind, but it's Muggins here that's wanted. I mean, that new girl, she's not well, you see. And Bet's getting ever so idle. Mm, it's 72, look. All right. Well, she's missing Alec, isn't she? Yeah, plus her little trips around those clubs, playing Lady Bountiful to his Mr Showbiz. Yeah, she asked me if I fancied a night out. All right. Fixed on my top, did you? Oh, no. <laughs> She's got plans. Oh, she's a madam. Well, she's over 21, you know, Betty. Yeah, I sometimes wonder. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Hello, madam. Now then. Ken's new statesman. Oh, pair okay. of number four knitting needles and a packet of mint on books, please. Uh, now, don't go mad. <laughs> well, I woke up this morning, I thought, what is life without mint on books? I'll indulge me guilty passion and beggar the band of hope. <laughs> hey, I tell you what, full get after though. Well, I blame the government, love. Uh, that's uh, three ten altogether. Thanks, love. Thank you. Well, Percy Subdin's just followed me in the street. We're wittering on about flipping poll tax and how all councillors should be locked up. Oh well, he thinks everybody should be locked up except lollipop men. <laughs> Anyway, Curly Watts comes round the corner looking a bit weird and Percy sort of shoots off in mid-sentence. I got the distinct impression it were following the poor oh, lad. Oh, oh, I've run all the way from the chemist, right up Rosamond Street, and I'm hardly out of breath. Oh, I've got to amaze Derek tomorrow morning. Oh, oh, oh are you all right, love? Oh, oh yeah. yes, it's just a stitch. It's nothing. You have to run through them, you know. Shan't be a moment. Derek's on a health kick. I don't think Zola Bud's going to survive. Tira. Um.
Excuse me, sir. A quick word, please. Mavis, you're exposing yourself. You're showing... Oh, honestly. Mavis, what? words fail me. What on earth are you doing in that window? I'm doing the window display. Yes, I can see that, but there's no need to make yourself part of it. Well, I can hardly stand there and make myself invisible, can I? What's so? up? Oh, I'd better ask Derek. Well, this is a personal matter. Mavis, oh. I will not have you on show in that window. Hang about. I'd like a word with my wife, if you don't mind. Mavis, if you can spare me a moment, between appearances. Oh. Oh, is it all OK? You better go before he blows a gasket. Hello, Hello love. Uh, could I have done this exchange of marks if he said? Yes, here we are. Um, is it right what I've heard about Mavis and Derek? Oh, now what? I believe they're flitting down Kingsley Road. Ooh. Only Betty uh, lives down there, you know, and she's very worried about the property prices. She's not daft, is she, Betty? <laughs> so, well. You were making a spectacle of yourself, Mavis. I mean, apart from the lack of decorum, there you were, doing menial things for all to see. I've always done the window display, Derek. I quite pride myself on it. Good heavens, Mavis, I thought you understood. Like I say, it's a question of status. Soon I'll be a top executive. I've... I can't have my wife in shop windows. It's for a few minutes, once a week. Never mind. Say DP happened to pass oh, by. Really, Derek, this is too much. Well, I'm sorry, Mavis, but it just won't do. Well, it's part of my job, for heaven's sake. In that case, the sooner we move and the sooner you leave your job, the better. In the meantime, if you must do the window, I suggest you wear trousers. Well, at least Norman's eating. How do you know? Mr. Sugden trailed him to the supermarket. <laughs> it now appears he's safe and sound in his flat, thank the Lord. What, still under Percy's expert surveillance? Oh, no, Mr. Sugden's indoors, doing his boots and muttering about harassment. He had a little difficulty in the supermarket with the management. They accused him of acting suspiciously. Oh. <laughs> so who kept track of Curly? Mm. I went up just a while ago. Didn't knock on his door, but I smelt cooking. There's charred sausages from the aroma, but I thought best leave well alone. How are you diddling, ladies? What is it tonight? The monkey run, is it? No, Town's Women's Guild, Jack. You fancy it? Well, I would do, but I've not had my pink prints, have I? <laughs> Hey, better love. What? I'm in need of some shit. Let me get it for us. I'll get it, lovely. <laughs> <laughs> My gum. You're all dressed up. Are you about? Got it in one pack. Oh, How's trade out from? Oh, middling. Hey, you stop in the night, aren't you, love? Yeah, well, yeah, I reckon so. Yeah, well, don't wait up. I shan't need any cocoa. No, I won't. Have you got a pal? Oh, hi, Prince Charles. <laughs> uh, that sounds like my transport. Uh, if Di phones, tell her I'm visiting a sick friend. Be good. You can't be good. Be careful. Be good? See, <laughs> you've got a nerve. So does he seem like he's settled down, then? I mean, he worries me, does Curly. What makes you think he's not looking after himself? Well, I know for a fact that he's gone shopping. <laughs> well, that's news to me. Oh, aye. Well, uh, Percy tracked him into the supermarket. Supermarket? Now, look, don't get your hair off, Alfie. I didn't tell you before because I knew it would upset you, though. Yeah, that's all very well. He can afford to go in the supermarket. He can't pay his rent. Yeah, he's got to eat, Mr Roberts. They've all got to eat. That's how you make your fortune, isn't it? My fault. I wish you'd shut up, lad. I'm too bloody soft, that's my trouble. That lad hasn't paid his rent for three weeks. That's 60-odd quid. Well, it can't go on, can it? Folk are evicted for less. Oh, How's your lodger, then? Ain't feeling any brighter? My lodger? If you mean young Curly Watts, in the first place, he's not my lodger, he's my tenant. In the second place, I couldn't tell you because he got himself locked in there and he won't come out. In the third place, I couldn't care less how he is in the first place. Well, I couldn't be like that, mate. Anybody living under my roof, I'd have to get involved. Yeah. Still, it must make life a lot easier, eh? Not giving a monkeys about your fellow human beings. Yeah, well, you won't be so philosophical if he owed you three weeks' rent. Oh. Skulking again, is he? I saw this sort of thing happen in the war. Here we go. 
Men who'd lost their nerve, near misses through enemy shelling. Two shots to come out their dugouts. Look, Percy, this isn't the war. All that's happened to Curly Watts is had a bust up with his girlfriend, that's all. All the same, I remember once at the depot, peacetime this was, a national service lad locked himself in the CO's toilet and he wouldn't come out. RSM Collins said, well, we'll either send for a tank and blast him out, or Sergeant Sugden to talk him out. Well, they didn't send for the tank, they sent for me. Yeah, well, they would do, wouldn't they, Percy? They would do. So, you leave him with me, I'll sort him out for you. Percy, it's got nothing to do with you. No man is an island, that's what RSM Collins used to say. Grand chap. Put you on a charge as soon as look at you. Picture of health, wouldn't you say, Mavis? Man in the prime of life. <laughs> I should think that doctor will get a pleasant surprise when he examines me this afternoon. I'm sure you'll be just another body to him, Derek. Another case history. <laughs> They're seeing dozens of people every day. Yes, granted, but most men my age are crumbling wrecks. Men who have squandered nature's endowment. I've never done that. No. You know, when I was a young man, other chaps used to make mock. Rattling around they were, drinking hard, smoking hard, all that. Come on, Derek, they used to say, you're a long time dead. I just used to smile because I was thinking, I intend to be a long time alive. Well, alive or dead, Derek. If you don't book up and eat your muesli, you're going to be late for work. <laughs> I slept like a top last night. Well, I didn't. Mm. Well, Derek, do you really want me to give up working for Reed? Not a question of what I want, Mavis. It's a question of what you ought to want for yourself. And I'm merely pointing out that none of the other executives' wives are, are dog's bodies in newsagent shops. I'm not a dog's body. Anyway, I mean, that's my wages. We'll be paying a mortgage in a week or no. two's time. Mavis, once I'm accepted in the executive pension scheme, I think I can safely say that my salary will be adjusted upwards quite sharply. I shall be earning more than sufficient. Mm. I'd still like to think I was helping. Don't we put your savings down on the house, Mavis? I think you've done enough. I appreciate that. Well, we're a partnership, aren't we? A team. Exactly. And as an executive, I'm going to need that backup team more than ever. How do you mean, Derek? Backup? Well, at the end of the day, Mavis, a day full of decision-making, executive cut and thrust, I shall need you at home waiting for me. Soothing hand on the throbbing brow, slippers warming by the fire, glass of sherry while I unwind. <laughs> We're moving into a whole new lifestyle, oh, Mavis. It sounds wonderful when you describe it like the that. smell of cooking wafting from the kitchen and I can stimulate you by telling you all about my day and you can well you can soothe me by giving me an account of yours <laughs> well all the same I still think Rita expects me to go on working for her I've thought this before Mavis though I've never said anything Rita does have a selfish streak <laughs> Better gone shopping then, has she? <laughs> now there, she's still in bed, isn't she? Oh, late in last night, was she? I couldn't tell you. Oh, come on, Betty, you kept here. You must know what time she got in. Look, it's none of my business, yours either. Oh, man, yeah, that late, eh? Must have been a right little rave up round the clubs, I suspect. And you know, God knows where, we God knows who, but then... I don't blame her, it's Alec I blame. How do you make that out? Oh, come on, Betty. How long's he been away? Eight week. Woman like Bet gets frisky after eight days, never mind how week. Oh, you're a crude devil, you. Oh, come on, like, like an eight day clock. I mean, if you don't wind them up, they run down and. and hello, here's Mary Lex. I don't want to load a chat. Grab that head. Ah, well, if you will go on the razzle half the night, swinging and dancing and coming home with the milkman. Been telling the tale, have you, Betty? Me? I never said a word. I will go out when I like and with whom I like. Paul Rigby or anybody else. Right, you. He's a float. I thought you had more about you, Betty. Paul Rigby? Pup, she went out with Paul Rigby. See now what you've landed me with all your daft talk. She thinks I've told you all about it. You knew all the time she went out with Paul Rigby. Why don't you tell me? Why do you think? I won't tell you if you're standing there with your trousers on fire. Charming. Ah, right. Top me up, Alf. I will, love. Remy Moss! Remy Moss! I know you're up there! What the heck's that? 
Percy soaked him. Come on, man. It's no good sulking and feeling sorry for yourself like a big girl. What's up with you? Aha. What did I tell you? Good lad. Now we're now we're shaping. Mr. Sugden, will you please just go away and leave me alone? We all know what you're up to, you know. You're just trying to draw attention to yourself, aren't you? Attention is the last thing I want. I just want to be left alone. What you want is good advice, and I'm here to give it to you. Mr. Sugden, you are one of the main reasons I'm not coming out. At least if I stop up here, I don't meet busybodies like you. Well, at least we know he's not lost his wits. He's still talking sense. Are you satisfied now, Percy? Up to a point, yes. I'm getting through to the lad. He's responding to my treatment. Hey, Mavis. You know this house you're buying on Kingsley Road? Yeah. I've been thinking. It'd be dead handy for 42 bus. Yes. I mean, it'll be practically door to door from there to here. You'll have to check up, though, what time they start running in the morning. I can't have you missing the early turns. Well, as a matter of fact, Rita, since you've brought the subject up, I, I was going to mention working arrangements. Mm, yeah. Well, with me, me and Derek moving away, it seemed like a good time to make changes. This is this husband of yours, isn't it? Do you know I can just see him? I bet he lies in bed in the morning, egging you on to better yourself. He's told you to ask for a rise, hasn't he? A rise? And he's quite right. Say no more, I'm convinced. But that's... No, no, no. Not... You deserve a rise, Mavis. And I dare say you'll find it useful taking this mortgage on. Look, Rita... Hello. Hello, Emily. Oh, I'll settle my paper bill, oh, please. Right. Oh, it's a lovely day now. It's really spring-like. Perhaps it's affecting Mr Sugden. I'm told he's been making the most dreadful exhibition of himself, shouting at Norman's window. <laughs> um, I'll go and get the lunch. Is something bothering Mavis? Oh, she seemed rather on edge. Living with Derek, wouldn't you be? <laughs> yes. Bessie, hot pots. I'll get your hot pots. It's just gone off. Find yourself. Yeah, yeah, and I need it and all. That balmy pal of yours would drive anybody to drink. Oh, who, Curly? Well, who else? I've got Percy Sugden standing in the street shouting up from outside my shop window now. <laughs> Might be able to sell tickets for that, eh? It's not funny, lad. He owes me three weeks' rent and I never see him. I can hear him all right, stamping about upstairs, playing his rotten music. I could have him evicted, you know, and within me rights. Look, he's got problems, hasn't he, that so? Three weeks' rent, you say? Mm. I'll give you that. You? Oh, yeah, sure. How much is it? Well, 60 quid. Oh, are you sure? Of course I am. Hey, hang on, hang on. I don't think Curly will thank you for paying his debts, will he? You know what he's like. Yeah, yeah you're right. But he'll give it you back, Mr Roberts. Save the nose, is that? Well, I wish I had your faith. Yeah, no, I'm feeling fairly human again now. It's all that riotous living. I'm not used to it anymore. Well, I hardly get out now. Oh, I agree with you. I know it's good for me. Hang on a minute. Just a member of staff passing through, that's all. Hey, you all have. Hey, that's on the phone in there. Oh, you're talking to me now, are you? I've got to talk to somebody. I think she's on to him. Not that poor flaming Rigby. Keep your voice down, yes. Alec will go mad if he finds out. I mean, I know his type. He'll go raving mad. It will not be Betty, will it? It will be me. How do you have that out? Well, who does he always lash out when someone doesn't suit him? Me. If he comes home and finds she's playing away, he's going to take it out on me, isn't he? He's now so sure, Betty. I mean, Ken would be delighted if I gave up my council work, but they need more than housework. Well, then again, you see, I don't want to let Rita down because she's been very good. <laughs> but Derek needs me, and I've... I'm going to upset someone, but well, Derek is my husband. You can always get a husband, love. Good friends are a bit harder to come by. Oh, you don't really mean that, do you? No, I don't know, really. <laughs> it all depends what day it is. But listen, Mavis, nobody should be telling you what to do. I mean, if you want my advice, don't do what Rita wants and don't do what Derek wants. Do what you want. Mind you, it does help if you know what that is. <laughs> I'm not in. Come on, Curly, it's me, Martin. 
I'm not in. Come on, open the door. I've got a message for you from Shirley. All right. Well, what did she say? Who? Shirley, you said you had a message for me from Shirley. I was making it up. If I'd have known that, I wouldn't have let you in. Well, that's why I said it. You're looking a right mess, mate. Nice to see you keeping your flat nice and tidy anyway. Look, uh, Martin, do you mind just leaving? Yeah, I do. I've come round here to sort you out, curly mate. Put a snick on that door before some thus crazed ale can try to fight his way back in. I love it. Another dinner time, another dollar. I'm going to put that kettle on, Betty. I'm dying for a cup of tea. Bet, oh. can I have a word with you? Aye, what's up, love? Well, I know you say it's none of my business, but, uh, well, I've got to say something. What about? About you going out last night with Paul Rigby. I mean, anyway, love it, you had it all wrong this morning. I never said a word to Jack Duckworth. He was just nosying about. I never said a word. I know, Betty, love. I'm sorry if I was a bit sharp with you this morning. I had a bit of a headache. Yeah, had to your problems if you keep going out with that bloke. Hey, he's in the trade, same as me. Last night, I wasn't just with him, you know. There was another half a dozen licensed Vicks, and it wasn't an orgy either. I never said it was, but I think you're asking for trouble, love. I mean, what's your Alec going to say when he finds out? Oh, I think you ought to use a bit more common sense. I really do. Betty, <laughs> but... you were right first time when you said it was none of your business. I shall put the kettle on. Here's a coffee, mate. You don't seem to have any milk. No, I'm, uh, I'm out of milk. I might have a lot of things at the minute. Well, all you have to do is go downstairs, you know. To the shop. I hate that corner shop. Half Robert's peering at you and clucking. I just can't stand people at the minute. Mm, thanks very much. No, no, I didn't mean you. It's just... Well, I don't want to talk to anybody. Not even mate. Yeah. Well, Alf Roberts wants to talk to you. And I can tell you what he wants to say. Where's my rent? You'll get it. Well, it's been morning in the Rovers this afternoon. Never heard I'd like it. In fact, Kevin was going to pay him. But I stopped him. Kevin? Hmm. It's got nothing to do with Kevin. It's got nothing to do with anybody. Yeah, as when old Roberts is thinking about chucking you out of this place. I don't care if he does. Doesn't matter anymore. Mm. Nothing matters anymore. Do you know something? You're really beginning to get on my wick. Well, that's because you don't understand. Of course I understand. Oh, it's disgusting, this. You got any sugar? <sighs> of course I understand. <laughs> it's quite simple. Because your girlfriend's chucked you. She was more than my girlfriend. That's what they don't understand. She was everything to me. Mm. She paid your rent. What? All right, mate. Look. I felt just like this once, Curly. I had this girl. She went off me. And I tell you, I felt like it was the end of the world. Don't remember you saying anything? Well, you didn't know me then. I was only seven years old at the time. <laughs> Which is about the age you're acting at the moment. I mean, all this going to pieces. You're stupid. It's no wonder Shirley gave you the push. That is a lousy thing to say, Martin. <sighs> but you're right. I'm useless. Well, if you want to get her back, mate, you'll have to start by showing her you've got a bit up here. I'm just sick of people telling me what to do. Well, good. They might stop telling you what to do when you get off your big fat backside again. Sit Rita, tell you what, while you're doing nothing, why don't you put kettle on? Look, Rita, I've got, I've got to talk. There's something I have to say to you. All right. Well, get on with it. I'm going to have to leave. Leave? Leave the cabin? You mean give up working here? <laughs> 
Oh, I, I know you've been taking it for granted that I'd go on working here. Oh, yes, I have. I thought you were happy working oh, here. I am. I have been. And this morning, I mean, I, I wasn't angling for a rise. Quite the opposite. I, I was trying to tell you then. Well, what's brought all this on? Well, it's the... Uh, the house, the, the move, really. I mean, I, I won't be living over the job anymore. Well, you'll be on a bus route. We were only saying this yes, morning. I know, but then again, I mean, I'll have the house to run. The house to run? Oh, come on, Mavis. It's only a little semi. It's not Chatsworth, you know. You'll be bored out of your mind once it's all organised. Hang on. This is Derek, isn't it? It's him that wants you to pack in work in here. Well, that's not the point. Oh, I think it is. Very much so. I might have known it was Derek. Well, what's the verdict then, Doctor? Well, I think we'll have to wait for that till we've seen all your test results, Mr. Wilson. Oh, yes, yes, of course. I, I, I realise it's a very complex procedure. I must say, I've been impressed. It's been very, very thorough. That when, when I said, uh, what's the verdict just now, I, uh, I was just, well, you feel bound to ask, don't you? Just in case something untoward comes leaping out towards the, uh, the expert. <laughs> uh, I mean, if you were to say to me, now don't start watching any new television serials, well... <laughs> Do you worry about your health, Mr. Wilton? No, no, no. No, what I said just now, that was just a pleasantry. No, no, actually, I feel, uh, I feel pretty good. In fact, I, um, uh, I said to the wife only this morning, um, uh, moderation in all things, I said. It's the golden rule. Yes, I see from your form you got married in November last year. Uh, yes, that's correct. You're still a newlywed, Mr. Wilson. <laughs> Not your first marriage, though, I see. Uh, no, no, unfortunately. Uh, well, when I say unfortunately, I'm talking about my uh, previous marriage, not my present marriage. Um, by the way, um, what, what, what address have you got there? Rosamond Street, Weatherfield. Yeah, mm, that'll be changing, actually. That's just um, a pied à terre. A what? We'll be moving very, very shortly. Uh, we've just been using that as a sort of temporary base camp kind of thing, you know, until we find the right house. And that's quite a business these days, as I'm sure you know. New job. New marriage, new house. Everything new, eh, Mr. Wilton? <laughs> Everything new except me. <laughs> oh, I think you'll last quite a while yet. Oh, do you? Oh, good, good. Oh, <laughs> Is uh, Madam not showing her face tonight? No, not me. She's upstairs sulking around because I've said my piece about uh, you know who. Oh, we don't even mention his name now, then, eh? You never know. Is he a wig in here? It's uh, Hitler's centenary birthday tomorrow. Beg your pardon, Percy. I'm just saying tomorrow it's a hundred years to the day since Hitler was born. Will you be sending him a card? A card? He's dead, woman. I know that, Percy. I just wasn't sure if you did. Oh. Yes, girls. Uh, a bottle of lager, please, Jack. I know what on it. Yes, please. Right, come on. Is there any sign of Norman yet? Not a glimmer. You see, you're wasting your breath. I shall have another go at him tomorrow and the day after. Oh, you're not going to keep bawling up at his window, are you? Constant dripping, words away stone. He'll get tired of it before I do, I can assure you. Well, I'm tired of it now. That does it. The boy will have to go. No, now, I know you're worried about the rent. Oh, Norman it's not then. just the rent. Yes, but it's... all the same, I'd like to set your mind at rest about that. Now, I'm sure that Norman will pay you. But in the meantime, I'll write you a cheque for the full amount. Now, how much does he owe you? Oh, no, it doesn't seem right. 60 quid. Hang on a minute, Mrs. Bishop. Now, young Watt's pride's been hurt. Am I right? Yes. Well, paying his rent for him will hurt his pride again. Oh, I don't think that follows. Oh, Mr. Sugden's right, of course. It's a stupid idea on my part. What would we do without you, Percy? Oh, it's my pleasure, Mrs. Roberts. Always too pleased to help. Good for a few years yet, he said. He commented on me being newly wed, by the way. Not adversely, it wasn't being critical. I think he could see I haven't been overdoing things. No. Right. Italian tonight, I think. A little pasta. But first, the rovers. Oh, the rovers, do you think so? Yes, I do. Oh. One or two malts, a silent toast, a quiet prayer for the precious gift of health. 
Thanks, Jack. Thank Thank you, you, Abby. Love. Thank Thank you. Cheers, Abby. Cheers, love. 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 You know, there's nothing personal in Mavis's decision. Mavis's decision, my foot. It's your decision. Well, for your information, she happens to like working at the cabin. Why don't you ask her? No, don't, don't go, Rita. If I stop, I shall say so much I shouldn't. But if you want my honest opinion, you better start standing up for yourself. Or pretty soon you won't have a soul to call your own. Oh, that was quite uncalled for. Rita's the last person to lay down rules for domestic harmony with her record. <laughs> Kept you waiting. Hey, we're worth waiting for. You look knockout. Thank you. I hope my bar staff have been looking after you. Oh, no complaints. Good. I wouldn't like any complaints. Right, Betty, yes. Jack, I'm off out. Seeing as Paul has very kindly offered to be my escort for the evening, I know I can confidently leave everything in your hands, can't I, Betty? Well, yeah, I suppose so. Mm. <laughs> Good. Night, night. God bless. Ladies, I'm Derek. Oh, I'm Derek. Hey, that um, Stella Rigby's, what's the name? What's been going on between her and Ben? Go on. No, Ben is a friend of the family. Big mate, him and Alec. Give over, Betty. Eh? What is the use of covering up? She's at it, isn't she? No, you're just at it. Yeah, away. Well, she'd never be so flagrant with it if it were out like that. Exactly. That's what I think. That is exactly what she wants you to think. She's at it. And I'll tell you what, when Alec gets back here, there's going to be murders. What I'm saying is, if you get seen in them clothes, what's the use in us being stone clad? Hey, at least you've still got him. Not many fellows can say that at our age. You can give lessons. Eh? You don't have to be our age, neither. Look at young Gail, poor soul. That's no age to be a widow, you know. Yeah, well, it has sorted me. Hey, you don't mean that. Of course I do. Look, she's laughing at her, isn't she? She's got a life here. Who is? Um... Gail. Vera's saying she's best now she's on her own, but I know. She might be going on all right, but deep down she's suffering. I'll see you. I didn't mean that. Ivy! Oh, well, you'll be glad to hear he's back in the human race again anyway. Who? Curly. I've just passed him off to college. Not a trace of sackcloth and ashes. Oh, send him round here. We need him. <laughs> All right. There, then, what do you want? Uh, I'll just have a packet of mints, please. Right. I'm not saying you will, huh? but if you should happen to come across Jenny, you know, say in the cafe or sat on the red rag, just huh? say two bees and a C to her, will you? Slave driver. Well, I know what it's like when you two get together. When one's trying to work, the other one tries to stop them. No, would I, Mrs Fairclough? Yes, you would. <laughs> 20p, love. There you go. Ta. Well, it might seem like we're idly passing the time of day, you know. But really, I'm testing her on the serial prediction of the USSR. Are you? Yeah. Thank you. Oh, thank you very much. So then. Hurrah. Well, thank you very much. Eh? That comment about one person wanting to work and the other one
Do you? Yes, I do. Good. Well, I'm glad you're both in agreement. Yes, we are. And now that he's married a nodding dog, he should be happy. Well, frankly, Rita, I would think you're the last person to comment on other people's relationships. Thank you, Mavis. I dare say that remark was inspired by Derek, too. No sympathy, Betty. Although a few flowers wouldn't go amiss. Now, that is it. It is. Again. Hey. I'm saying nothing. Good. Another late one, wasn't it? Late enough. Have you taken root, Betty? Or is there any chance of a brew? Does his wife know? Does whose wife know what? You know. Who you messing around with? I thought you were saying no. Well, it's none of my business. You said it, Betty. But you told half the bar last night. And you know why? Why? Because... Because I've now to hide, that's why. So does his wife know? Stella, well, she might. Might? I see. See what? I see she doesn't know. And you're carrying on behind her back and Alec's back. Betty, before Alec left, he asked Paul to look after me. Did he? Yes. It's all above board, you're saying? Yes. I see. So why doesn't Stella know? Are you getting me that tea, Betty? Oh. Anyway, if she's making no secrets of it, it has to be innocent, doesn't it? I'll do me a favour, Tina. When Paul Rigby takes her out, what do you think they're doing? Swapping stumps? Ooh, that's about all I'd do with him. Oh, well, you would say that, wouldn't you? Because you're all the same, you women. You look as if butter won't melt in your mouth. As soon as your fella's back's turned, you're at it. <laughs> well, that's the corner shop cleaned out. Oh, good lass. Do you know I get tired of knocking stale bread into bread and butter pudding? <laughs> Bet Alf doesn't know. Oh, see, yeah, it's his favourite. Why do you think he's the sheep he is? <laughs> hey, Audrey, do you want these drains? They'll go down to sink otherwise. Oh, tempt me, fellas. Go on. Well, it's no use wasting it. Hey, it's our profits you're chucking away. Shame on you. Your own mother, I know. That's right. Oof. Oh, crikey, fellas, look at the colour of that. Oh, well, <laughs> it's been stood. <laughs> hey, it's just coming up. <sighs> She's not getting out, you know. She's keeping very close nights. Well, it's been no time. It would do her good. I know it would. I mean, get out, see her friends. Half an eye would babysit any time, but, I mean, when I offer, she just says no. Maybe she's not ready yet. Oh, look, it would be better than sitting alone night after night for this. Come on. Phyllis, you on strike? Look, I'll try and have a word, but she does right to go her own pace. She shouldn't be forced. I'm not forcing her. I just don't want her giving up, that's all. I know what you mean. Morning. Oh, oh Alma, hello. Good morning, Mrs Sedgwick. Are you on strike, Phyllis? No, I'm just clearing up. Do you like your tea that colour? <laughs> Good morning, Gail. Morning. Ah, uh, this is Gail, my manageress. This is Stan Taylor. He's going to be doing some building work for me upstairs. Oh, hello. Hello, look. Morning, Carol. Christine. Christine, sorry. Right, shall we go through? Excuse me. Oops. <laughs> One of us is going to have to lose some weight, love. <laughs> Excuse me. Builder? What's all that in Edo? Am the clue? Excuse me. Am I in your way? Thank you. Oh, indigestion tablets. You do have them, don't you? Yes, we do. Oh. You're suffering, don't you? Oh, me? never eat Kelly. So, how's the house buying going then? Oh, fine, thank you. Where is it you flit in? Kingsley Road. Kingsley Road? That's where they still have outside loves. And there's an act of parliament that says you've got to donkey stone your step twice weekly, innit? <laughs> I'm sorry, Mr. Brennan, I'm not in the mood for humour. Uh, yes, I can see that, yes. Is there something else? Yeah, no, that's all. 95 pence, thank you very much. When are you moving then? Oh, well, we haven't got a date yet, but as far as we're concerned, the sooner the better. Best of luck. Do you want one of these? No, thank you. So long, then. <laughs> oh, yes, very funny. Have I said something? No, you haven't. No, I haven't. And until you stop playing silly beggars, I've no intentions of. Ah. Hello, Derek. Hello, Mavis. Hello, Derek. 
Hello, Rita. Will it be all right if I join Derek for my dinner now? Fine. Thank you. Not being followed, have you, Derek? I don't think so. Why? Because I'd hate to think what it would do to your job prospects if you knew you lived over a paper shop. You'd be on one sugar in your coffee. Take no notice of her, Derek. She's been like this all morning. Now, Mavis, Mavis, what have I said? Oh, sarcastic and snide comments, though, all morning, Derek. You've no idea Mavis, what I have to put up with. Deep breaths. Oh, Derek, it takes more than deep breaths when you're about to explode. Now, Mavis, you know, one of the ways my temperament is equipped for executive status is my ability to absorb stress. Now, in the workplace, there are many stressful situations arise, and what I've learned over the years is to stand outside it and just... Well, remove myself. What are you saying? That I should stand outside in Rosamond Street? Well, in spirit, yes, perhaps, what? yes. I mean, sometimes when my typists uh, are making careless mistakes or the coffee machine's out of order, I just imagine myself outside in the fields, in the meadows, breathing air, <sighs> deep breaths. You see? That's the way. Good. That's excellent, Mavis. Oh, it's no use, Derek. I still want to scream. This is another reason you shouldn't be working here. You know what's at the back of this, don't you? What? You're working with a jealous woman. <sighs> I mean, let's face it, what's Rita got to look forward to? A lonely old age, and she knows it. Well, as you're about to embark on a, a series of social events, entertaining, evening dress dinners, Hobnobbing with the elite. No, no wonder she's jealous. Derek, I feel better already. That's what I'm here for. Oh, look, here's me just thinking about myself. What about you? Have you had the results of your health assessment Not yet? This afternoon. Oh. So there'll be cause to push the boat out. Be ready for a sweet sherry or two at tea time. <laughs> she likes men, doesn't she? Oh, that's Mike Baldwin. It's harmless. No, this poor Rigby do's a different matter, love. Stopping out all hours with him. If Alec finds out... <laughs> Why is it the violent type? Alec? Yeah, I wouldn't say that. Well, he wouldn't like his wife carrying on. Mind you, who can blame him? I wouldn't love it. <laughs> I certainly wouldn't. So, when you get your licence back, how are you going to celebrate? Large whiskies all round? No, more like a long, lonely drive in the country. Miss it, you know, driving. The trouble with being driven is you get sat next to jerks like Terry Duckworth. Could be worse. You could be sat next to his mother. <laughs> No, no, nothing to celebrate, really. Keep it quiet, more like it. Still, I mean, we'll be sorry if it means you'll be drinking less. Yeah, you might, but my liver won't. <laughs> <laughs> Stella. Hello, Bet. I hope I'm not interrupting. Of course you're not. You know Mike Baldwin, don't you? Yeah, yes. we met. Hello right. again. Bet, I thought I'd just look in. I hope I'm not interrupting. Uh, can you spare a minute? Of course I can, Stella. Do come through. <laughs> What did I say? What did I Fleming well say? Who the ex that? That, Tina, is trouble. That is Stella Rigby, Paul Rigby's wife. And you can honestly say that with Alec on the other side of the world, you're not making the most of it. How little you know me. Bet. I was at that health farm with you and at the hotel afterwards. But I've got a pub to run, Stella. I don't get time for anything else. Well, I'm damn sure I would. What a staff for. And anyway, while there's no man on the premises, I feel I have to be around. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers, Bet. But you've got Jack. Exactly. So you can see my problem. <laughs> Well, you can always have Charlie Bracewell now. Oh, no, Tar. It's fine. I'm coping. And you honestly haven't got any uh, adventures underway? Well, apart from the dray men and the little fellow with the pork scratchings, where am I going to find one? Bet. Paul's been kind, though. Paul? Yes, your Paul. He's looked in a couple of nights just to see him all right. Has he? He must be bored, Stella. Mm. You're not looking after him. No, I don't think he's bored, Bet. Not at the moment. No? No, the trouble with Paul is, he's absolutely transparent. He comes in with the milk, stinking of drink and cheap scent, and expects me to believe he's been playing cards all night. <laughs> Honest bet, 
These bits he gets with. I don't know where he digs them up, but by the smell of them, they've passed their sell-by date on Woolworth's counter. <laughs> He's got horrible taste in women. Tarty, flashy, cheap, the lot of them. Still, why should I care? As long as he doesn't catch anything. Anyway, what I was going to say, seeing as you're stuck on your own like this, why don't we make some entertainment? Because with Alec away, Bet, I think I know somewhere where I can guarantee you'll hit lucky. <laughs> Do you want salad cream? Oh, I'm just the errand girl. It's for Rita. Well, is she watching her way to not? Give her salad cream. Hey, Catlett's going to be a restaurant upstairs. She'd have told me. Anyway, she's not keen on change, isn't Alma? Well, what's she doing? Taking a build up downstairs? It's something very simple, Phyllis. I mean, perhaps there's done for something. Well, why didn't she tell us then? Hiya. Oh, hi, hi. hi. Rita will have me guts for garters now. Why? Because I had the hard word this morning. Don't stop Jenny from studying. Well, you're not doing, are you? Oh, I was just sat in the cafe, Your Honour, and she forced herself onto me. Anyway, Mavis is over there. It's about to get straight back, isn't it? I think you want to see Mavis today. I'm fed up with her at the moment. All oh, right. Why? She's been really awful to Rita. Yeah? Do you know what she's going on about leaving? I mean, at a time like this, I'm just... You know what? She gets more like that Derek every day. She thinks of nothing but herself. Could have waited a bit, couldn't she? It's him doing it. He says that her working there is bad for his image. <laughs> image? What is his image, eh? Softy Walter. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it's good riddance, isn't it? Oh, no. She'll miss me, this. She mm. likes her. She drives the scatty, but she likes her. <laughs> I hope that's nice. Aren't we worth speaking to, then, Mavis? I don't mind speaking to anyone, Jenny. What I'm not prepared to do is row. And certainly not to row in public. Yeah, can we sit here? Yeah. Yeah. They're naughty. Girls, mm? if you want to see a bit of action, hang around. Oh, it's our lucky day, is it? Guess who is in the back with Bet. Go on, tell us. It's the laughing policeman. <laughs> Stella Rigby. Should have seen her when she come in. Fit to kill. Claw sharpen the lot. I tell you what, Jack. Hey, we could do with some mixers up, lovey. I brought you two crates up dinner time, Betty. Do you know it was like high noon? If looks could kill. Ooh. Thanks for calling, Stella. Love. Thank you, Bet. Mm. And don't forget now, it's a date. We can't have you panning alone. <laughs> Betty. Yes. Will you do me a big favour? Oh. Take care of Bet while Alex's off. Uh -huh. Don't let her get lonely. Right. <laughs> My word. A typical day at the Rovers. <laughs> Had any good wakes lately? <laughs> <laughs> Bye all. Bye, Stella Love. What have I got? Bells on me a summit. That's... Oh, how much did I say it was? Two ninety. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr Baldwin. I'm giving you too much. First lesson in business, that is. If you want to make a mistake, make sure it's on your side. That's two ninety three four five. I'm sorry. I'm just not myself today. Moving house, that's what it is. Very stressful time. Did you know that? I did, as a matter of fact, yes. Well, you don't want to let it get to you. You want to be like Rita here, calm and poised. Oh, thank you, kind sir. What have I done to deserve that? Mavis isn't feeling herself today. She needs a bit of the kid glove treat. <laughs> See ya. Yeah, well. well, did you get me that salad roll, by the way? I did. Thank you. I see. We're in for another afternoon of it, are we? I don't know what you're talking about. Look, maybe I'm getting just about sick of you oh, and your are mood. You? Well, I'll tell you what I'm sick of. I'm sick of not being able to go into that cafe without being insulted. Who by? By Jenny sat smirking there with Martin. All right, what was said? No, I don't know. Something about my not speaking to her, I don't know, but I know where she gets it from. Well, I'm sorry about that. She's no right to be rude to you. But it isn't just Jenny, is it? Who else is it? Well, you. Me? Yes, I can't turn round without the some comment. I haven't said You're a word. You're deliberately provoking me. I am not, Mavis. Small-mindedness, that's all it is, Rita. I'd have thought better of you. Small-mindedness, nastiness and provocation. Hey, if you really want the facts, lady, the only one doing any provoking round here is you. <laughs> you and that pudding you married. Now, 
I don't want to lose you, Mavis. You know that. But I'm damned if I'm having this every hour of the day. So I suggest you go and put the kettle on or go upstairs. But wherever it is, just make sure it's somewhere where I don't have to look at that suffering face. You wanted to see me? Ah, oh, very. Come in. Yes, yes. Thank uh, you. Take a seat. Thank you very much. Ray. <laughs> Everything all right? Very good indeed, thank you. Ray. I suppose you're wondering why I wanted to see you. I suppose it's about my health assessment. Yes. Yes, it is. I, I do, from time to time, Derek, have the need to discuss their results with our employees. Of course. Well, and you understand it's as much for their benefit as the company's. I think it's a very good scheme, Ray. I mean, after all, you can feel as fit as a flea, but when it comes down to it, do you actually know? <laughs> now, where health is concerned, you can't be too careful. Yes. Uh, well, what concerns me... We need fit people in this firm, after all. Quite. No room for lame ducks, eh? <laughs> Do you know anything about blood pressure, Derek? Um, well, we've all got it. <laughs> That's about all I know. As a rough guide, you can reckon normal blood pressure would give a reading of uh, 100 plus the person's age. So if we were to reckon around 150 or so in your case, that would be about right. Yes. Well, yours is currently showing at 190 to 200. According to the ECG, you have a slightly increased heart rate. And, uh, well, there's evidence from the pressure in your eyes that you might be prone to hypertension. Frankly, I'm worried about your ability to cope with stress. They're not with you, are they? Eh? Oh, no, I've seen enough of her today, Betty. <laughs> oh, no, what she wants. Try and remember her name anyway. So, things aren't that easy right now. Anyway, I think I'm doing the right thing, selling the house. And, and, and at least I shall get some cash. And upstairs at the cafe will make me a nice flat. I should be really happy there. But... Things are going to be tight, Gail, okay. finding myself on my own again, you know. Yes, I do. Oh, yes, of course. I'm thinking I might have to save myself a wage at the cafe as well. Who's? Phyllis. Oh, no, now, I know what you're going to say. There's me. You? Yes, what? I mean, there's no reason why I can't work in the cafe, is there? And I'm sure Phyllis is ready for a rest. But look, I don't want this broadcast, all right? Not till I've made up my mind. All right, are you? How's yourself? Hi. Waiting for bet. Could be. Did uh, do you know your missus in here at dinner time? Oh, gets around us, I would tell her. <laughs> Just a word to the wise, my friend. Oh? Alec. What about him? He knows some bad lads, do you know what I mean? Oh. Very, very bad lads, I mean. If he was to hear that his missus was seeing somebody else, I mean, he might just tell these bad lads, you know. I'll tell you what, Jack. I know some bad lads myself. And if they get to hear that somebody's been speaking out of turn, well, know what I mean. Uh, and another thing. What's that? My bad lads are bigger than his bad lads. Right, Jack, oh, back to work. <laughs> right, well, sorry. Yeah. Sorry to have kept you far. Away. That's all right, but give me a chance to make friends with the natives. <laughs> Well, I might not have stopped him taking her out, but I certainly put the frighteners on him, didn't oh, I? Oh, yeah, Jack. I could see that. <laughs> right, well, <laughs> sit yourselves down and I'll buy you both a drink. Oh, thanks. Though why I should after what Mavis oh, told me, I don't know. Why what? You've been giving cheek, I hear. Me? Look, you don't help things, you know, Jenny. I have to work with her. There you go. Thank you. We weren't giving a cheek. It's all Mrs. Fairclough. Honest. I was there. Yes, I know you were there. She said you were there. Oh, Rita, it was a joke. All I said to us, aren't you speaking to me? That's all. That's all it was. Honest. Yeah, honest. <sighs> well, you'll do me a favour if you give Mavis a wide berth for a while. There's not much you can say to her when she's in state, she is. What are you having, Martin? Well, I'll have a pint, please, uh, sir. Jenny. Martini? Ooh. You may be over 18, but while I'm buying, alcohol is for high days and holidays. Think again. Mm. Oh, there must be some mistake, Derek. I mean, you said yourself you're very good at stress. Of course I am. Doctor was a fool. 
medical assessment, medical farce. I knew he was a fool from the start. He'll have misread his equipment. Well, can't you have another try? No, I've asked. I'm stuck with it. Now I know how people feel who are wrongly convicted. Well, you should complain. I'm going to complain. I'm going straight to DP in the morning. Does this affect your executive status and your pension scheme? Affect it? It's totally out of the window. Oh. I'm to lose my job on the evidence of some jumped-up twerp in a clinic. And what the hell does he know about stress? Lose your job? Well, no, not lose it. Well, yes, to all intents and purposes, yes, it is to lose it. A sideways move, they call it. How the hell they think dispatch department is sideways from sales, I don't know. It's two floors down for a start. I'm not taking this line down, maybe, so no. They'll see how Derek Wilton copes with stress. They'll see! Here we are. Stress. Muesli or bran nuts this morning? What did I have yesterday? Bran nuts, I think. Oh, muesli, then. You don't want to become bran dependent, do we? <laughs> Listen, listen to what the dictionary says about stress. A force acting on a thing and tending to distort it. Am I distorted, maybe? <laughs> no. No. And mental and physical distress caused by difficult circumstances. Do I seem in mental and physical distress to you? Well, you did get very upset when you were telling me about being moved to the dispatch department. That wasn't distress, Mavis. That was righteous indignation. And what about the medical report? I mean, that did Yes, stick. I was thinking about that. The doctor who was paid to write that report... I mean, how would it look if he just wrote, fine, nothing wrong? It would look as though he wasn't doing his job properly. So, what does he do? He casts around for something vague, something that can't be pinned down. What could be vaguer than stress? I suppose so. Oh, yes. It's like when you take your car in for service. They always find something wrong, even though it's running perfectly. No, I promise you, Mavis, I'm not taking this lying down. I'm going straight in to see DP this very morning. <laughs> Derek? What? You do seem to be blinking a lot. Blinking? Yes. Everybody blinks, Mavis. Oh, yes, I know. You just seem to be blinking more than usual. Oh. Listen, I'm going straight to the top, straight to DP. I'll bet he doesn't even know about it. He'll probably be as outraged as I am. I wish you'd stop staring at me, Mavis. Do you know that you, you've got a sort of twitch? Don't be ridiculous. I've never noticed that before. Mavis, I've not got a twitch. I, I'm not under any stress. I'm perfectly calm. You've started blinking again. Well, you got your board. Aye. <laughs> now all I need is my lodgings. <laughs> not to worry, love. Not many more, and then I shan't be disturbing you. Watch your head, lad. Oh, it's all right. Gives us something to watch. <laughs> hey! Do you mind doing your courting in your own time? Yeah, I was just having a brew. Put them down and get out to that van. Oh, cheers, oh, uh, What's going on? Some of Talma's having done. What, like a facelift or something? No, some of she's having done upstairs, like alterations. Well, I know that, but what? There's enough wood gone up there to build an ark. She's not heard a weather forecast, we haven't, has she? Well, out I get to know, I'll let you know. All right, Phyllis. <laughs> the world's relying on you, you know. You're as eyes and ears. Well, if nobody's telling me out round here, I'm not lowering myself to us. No, neither am I, Phyllis. You mean upstairs? Well, I can tell you what they're doing if you want to know. How come you're so well informed all of a sudden? And I've been talking to John, the apprentice. Hey, what did he say? Well, they're turning upstairs into a flat that Alma Sedgwick's gonna live in. Hey, fancy. Hey, did you know that? I don't think Alma wants it broadcasting. No, well, I won't tell nobody. Neither will I, unless somebody asks me. Here's Bet on the premises this morning, Betty. Oh, she's where else would she be? Good question. Even better question is, where is Paul? Hey, 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 hey! We're here to work, not indulge in nasty idle gossip. Oh, we could try both at once, Betty. Yeah, well, I don't want to stand here and listen to it. Thank you very much. Morning, all. Morning. 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 All right, all right, don't let me interrupt. I know how much work there is in keeping a pub ticking over. <laughs> God knows I ought to. My wife's told me often enough. Bet in the back, is she? Can I give her a message? Well, you can tell her I'd like a word with her, if it's convenient. Certainly. All right, Jackie. Hi. <laughs> Morning visits now, eh? They're moving in before long. 
Got a visitor. Oh, yeah. Are you decent? Shall I show him in? Well, I'm decent, but you can show him in anywhere. Mm. Morning. Thought it might be you. Bet. I'm sorry. I'm very, very sorry. Oh, is there a brew going around? Help yourself. Uh, I overstepped the mark. I know I did. Uh, what can I say? I mean, uh, there I was in the back of a taxi with a very lovely lady. Uh, after a great evening out, now, you, you will admit that. Yes, no complaints, sir. Uh, a certain amount of alcohol had been consumed. <laughs> well, uh, I got a bit carried away. Try it again, Paul, and you will get carried away on a stretcher. <laughs> anyway, uh, no hard feelings, eh? Pals again, are we? Go on. You see, I... I don't get much affection at home. Oh, once, don't uh... give me all that sob story stuff about your wife not understanding you. I know your wife, remember? I'd say she understands you well enough. <laughs> well, sometimes that's worse than when they don't understand you, is that? Anyway, to show how sorry I am, I'd like to take you out for a nice meal tonight, eh? A what? And try and grope me again in the back of another taxi. Oh, no, 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 on my honour as a... Uh, as a married uh, man? Aye, uh, well, <laughs> I'd rather we didn't keep referring to that. Just two pals. Out for a nice meal together, what do you say? Early. How do you mean? Well, so I can get back here for the last hour. Aye, right. Uh, anything you like, eh? Well, you're not serious. Well, she seems to be, so I don't have much choice. Oh, dear, this place without Maeve. It'll be like Punch and Judy with one of them missing. Well, Punch will still be. <laughs> oh, thank you. Maeve, I've just been looking at this advert for someone to take your place. Oh, yes, well, uh, Derek... Th well, we both thought it was time I moved on, especially with getting a new house. I mean, that'll be quite demanding. Tell her the real reason. That is the real reason. Executive wives don't work in paper shops. Oh, oh, do they not? Uh, well, what do they do then? Well, they get up when it suits them, uh, do a little flower arranging, have their hair done. I can't think there's much more to it than that. It sounds a bit like being a grocer's wife to me. <laughs> Except grocers have more money. Ah, well, they might, but you try getting it off them. Now, that is the real job. I hope you'll be very happy as an executive wife, Maeve. <laughs> Bye. Bye, love. It's not too late. Say the word and I'll tear this up. I've no wish for you to tear it up, Rita. Right. It's going to the window. Good. And then the die will be cast. This is the end of an era we're talking about. So are you absolutely 100% sure it's what you want? Yes. And I do mean what you want, not somebody else with whom you're intimately involved. Yes. It's going. It's going. It's gone. Oh, excuse me. Ah, yes, Mr. Wilton. Um, I did ask if you could arrange for me to see the managing director. Ah, well, yes, but as I said, he does have a very full schedule today. Yes, but this is urgent. A matter of life and death. Well, perhaps that's putting it a bit strongly, but... Hello, Mr. Griffith. Is he giving you a hard time? Oh, no, I'm trying to arrange to see DP, but... Ah, uh... busy man. All right if I go in, love. Oh, yeah, just go straight through. I thought you said he was busy. Busy seeing Mr. Griffiths, yes. You, you have told him I want to see him? Yes, I have, Mr. Wilton. I'll let you know the minute he's free, but that may not be today. Well, tomorrow, then. Tomorrow he's off to Amsterdam. That has got to be today. I mean, it's just got to be. So... Three shelves, what, eight or nine inch deep? Oh, yes, I think so. Right, no problem with that. Your flat, is it coming on then? It is, yes. When will you be moving in with us then? When I have decided, Phyllis, you will be the first to know. Mm -hmm. No tells, is there? No, no, not just now. <laughs> right, I'll crack on then. Kale. Did I not tell you that my plans for upstairs were strictly confidential? You did, yes. Well, how come Phyllis knows? And if she does, I mean, the rest of the world can't be far behind. Well, she didn't get it from me. Oh, did she not? No. 
Look, I wasn't just trying to be mysterious, you know. I mean, if my ex finds out I've sold that house and I'm not, I'm not paying a mortgage, I, he'll, he'll be after cutting me payments. Alma, I never said a word. Oh, for goodness sake, girl, you know, it would be nice if just for once you could be on my side instead of always ganging up with your cronies. Come on, Faye Gale. Can't you take a message? Well, it's about your Nicky. I think it's his school. Nicky? Large Scots boozer. Right, good. Oh, and uh, whatever this young lady here wants. Oh, isn't he kind, young lady? <laughs> Seems to me that I'm not the only one round here who's knee specs. I should pretend I didn't hear that, Jack. I'll have a gin and tonic, please. Anything you want. Audrey? Yeah? Telephone, lobby. Oh. That'll be your husband checking up on you. Oh, you wouldn't dare. Uh... <laughs> Who is it? Oh, Betty. <laughs> well, I may well be out for most of the evening, but I'm sure you and the rest of the staff can yes. call. I'll try and be back for the late rush, OK? Oh. <laughs> You're the boss. Oh, don't be like that. Look, Bet, what you do with your life is your business. But the less I can see of it, the happier I'll be. Excuse me, but I've got customers to see to. Why is it not possible to be friends with a fella without folk thinking there's something going on? I don't know. Mind you, it doesn't worry me. I don't have to answer to Betty or anybody else. No. Well, then. What was all that about? Why is it not possible to be friends with a fella without folk thinking there's something going on? Oh, things must be serious. If that's all you've got to fall back on. But you're just good friends. That's the oldest excuse in the book, isn't it? Oh, I've got to go, I'm afraid. It were our girl. Oh, thanks, love. Nikki's been in some trouble at school and she wants me to drive around. Well, nothing serious, I hope. Well, I think he's been in a fight. <laughs> mm. I shall have to leave that, lovely, but thanks for the drink. Oh, and to referring to me as a young lady. Any time, sweetheart. Oh, <laughs> Bye-bye. If I'm late home, it's because I'm still outside DP's door. There's no way I'm leaving that building without having a face-to-face -face with him. No, well, perhaps it's best left. Left? Well, yes, just for today, till you're in a calmer state of mind. You're trying to say I'm still in a state of stress, that that report was right? Well, you seem to be putting yourself under stress. I've never seen you so agitated. Well, it's only because I can't get to see the man. No, well, perhaps he... <laughs> what? Perhaps he doesn't want to see you, Derek. I think I'd better go, maybe, before I'm forced to ask which side you're on in this dispute. I'm on your side. Of course I am. Do you want to lift back to the shop? No, thank you. I think I'll walk. Oh, fine. Yes, you walk. No point in being driven by someone under stress. No telling what might happen. Uh, uh, hey, uh, so what's latest, then? On what? Well, Bet Lynch, my friend. Thank you, Roy. Oh, I keep forgetting. Mind you, I'm the only one to forget, am I? She doesn't seem to show herself. The boyfriend was round again this morning. Yeah. Broad daylight now, eh? <laughs> Hang on a minute. I don't got these up to do with us, if you ask me. No, neither do I. And I gather they're planning on swanning off again tonight. <laughs> well, there's no shame, some folks. Well, Bet's been on her own for quite a while now. She's bound to want a bit of company. Yeah, but you'd think she'd be a bit more careful about choosing it, wouldn't you? Now, you're stuck now. No, I'm not. All I'm saying is not the way I'd behave. Well, it's certainly not the way I'd expect you to behave, either. Well, you know what I think, don't what you? Was? I think it'll all end in tears. I don't know who's yet, but tears. <laughs> Look, I have work I should be doing. As I said, the managing director's very busy. And so am I. Well, I should be. I would be if I wasn't sitting here. Oh, look, if I gave you a memo, could you see you got it? Well, yes. And That's you make good. sure he reads it. I'll tell him you consider it to be urgent, yes. Right. Well? All right. Take this down. To Managing Director, from D. Wilton. I have learned with dismay... Uh, no, 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 no. Um, uh, with dismay and uh, disbelief. I have learned with dismay and disbelief. Of the intention to transfer me to dispatch, for reasons which I consider to be totally misguided. I am in perfect health, whatever any medical report might say. If I am to serve this company to the best of my ability, then I believe it can only be in my present situation. Are you sure about this? Well, yes, yes, yes. Take it down. My present situation. Transfer to dispatch would be totally unacceptable. You make a great friend, Betty. 
Nobody knows that better than me. But you make a flipping rotten enemy. I don't get any pleasure from it, you know, I can promise you. Listen, I'm just going out with Paul for a bit of fun, a bit of company, a change. No, it's your business. Don't make it all uphill work, Betty. What do you want? Do you want me to say that I agree with you and that it's right? Well, I never will. I never will. I'm sorry, that's how it is. Do you expect me to live like a nun? Sitting here, mooning over pictures of Alec and crossing off days until he gets back? Because I can't do it, I'd go nuts. They cart me off in a yellow van. But that's as it may be, but it's still no excuse for well. For what? <laughs> Having a few nights out with a mate. Because that's all it is, Betty, I swear it. Oh, he'd like there to be something else, of course he would. He tries it on every night, comes back the next day and apologises, then tries it on again. I can handle him. <laughs> Hope you can. I can, Betty. Paul Rigby is no threat to my marriage. Good. And he's been great for his sanity. Not done a lot for your reputation, has he? That? It's been in tatters for years. Lost cause is that. Yeah, but what I mean is, love, people will be talking. And they still might be talking when Alec comes back. Then what's going to happen? Then I will tell Alec the truth. Like I'm telling you now. And there might be no need. It'll have all blown over by then. Not if you keep going out of them, it won't. Tonight, last time. What do you mean? Cross my heart and hope to die. Which will be ample time for the smoke to clear by the time my Alec gets back. Well, right. Still, I suppose you've not had it that easy. So you don't think I'm all bad, then? No, yeah, just three quarters. <laughs> so, how's this house of yours coming on? There aren't going to be any hitches this time, are there? Yeah, I don't think so. As a matter of fact, we're just waiting to hear from the solicitors with a completion date. Good. It. I hope it all turns out right for you. I think you resent me for trying to get on in the world. Oh, do I, Eckers Light? I wish you all the luck in the world. I hope you end up living in a castle, waited on hand and foot by flunkies. One of those, please. Oh, right, well, that's uh, 20 pence, please. All right. Everything all right? Okay. Yeah. Except I'm losing my assistant, so uh, you think you know anyone who's suitable? Why, I'm over retiring, is she? Yes, to a life of elegance. You'll be able to read about her in Homes and Garden. It's uh, with us getting this new house. We thought it was time I gave up working, at least for a little while. Wish I could afford to. They uh, still drive on the left-hand side of the road here, do they? Well, most of them. Good, because I'm getting my licence back tomorrow. Oh, well, you'll be able to visit Mavis when she gets settled, then. You'd like a jag parked on the drive, wouldn't you, Mavis? Is that right? <laughs> See you, then. Try. What I would like, Rita, is to enjoy my last few days working here with you without having to put up with comments all the time. OK. Won't say a word. Thank you. But I know what you're thinking. And it's not true. It's my decision to leave here, not Derek's. Hello, Mr Wilton. Look, it is getting rather late. Still I just wonder... busy, I'm afraid. Well, it can't be. Not every minute of the blessed day. Well, sometimes it's just like that. It just won't do. I mean, it just won't do. I, I, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I... Have you shown him the memo? I took it in, yes. Did he read it? Well, what did he say? Not very much. Well, not to me, anyway. Well, if you don't mind, I shall wait. I mean, he can't stay in there forever. He's got to come out sometime. He already has. What? He's at a meeting in Mr Griffith's office, and from the way he was talking, I think he's going straight home from there. So I honestly don't think there's any point you're waiting. You see, I've had offers from Leeds, Bristol and Newcastle, so I can take my choice, can't I? Yeah, well, I'm waiting for offers myself. Only well, they haven't actually come flooding in. <laughs> well, what are you going to do? I mean, you can't just sit around here doing nothing, can you? Well, why not? I can free tees off, Phyllis. Martin, you've got to have ambition, you've got to have a plan. Well, I have got a plan. I'm going to sit here and see what turns up. I'll meet you tonight. Oh, I don't know. Well, why not? Go on. Hey, you're not corking again, are you? I better go. He'll lose his rag. Well, all right. Tonight, then. Where's Gail? Oh, she's not in this afternoon. She's gone to school to pick up Nicky. And then she rang us up to see if we could manage without her. And that's what we've been doing. Well, what time was this, then, when she went? Oh, round about dinner time. Oh, well, I got the impression that this place was somewhat overstaffed. Now she's proved it. Has this, um, has this happened before? Not that I recall. Oh, well, of course, I mean, you would say that, wouldn't you? All sticking together, as usual. Well, I don't want to be unsympathetic, but I am not having anybody working here, as I can't trust just coming and going as he pleases. Who do you mean by that? Well, I'll give you a clue. This morning, she let out a secret asked her to keep, and this afternoon, she hasn't even been here.
Terry! Uh, just the man. Hello, Ray? Um, I, I, I was just waiting for somebody. Ah, uh, waiting for DP. Well, if you should chance to come this way, I, I wouldn't mind a quick word. About your new post in dispatch? Uh, yes. That you sent him a memo about? Yes. Oh, you know about that? Mm hmm So, has he, uh, uh, has he said anything? Well, uh, <clears throat> he, um, said quite a lot, actually. Look, um, I think we could talk better in my office, don't you think? Yeah, yeah, uh, yes, I... In my office. Wait for me in the car, will you, Paul? I just want to work with Betty. I am not just round the corner. Betty? Yeah? I'm just off, love. Are you all right? Oh, yes. I still feel I shouldn't be saying it, you know, but uh, well, enjoy yourself. Oh, thanks. This memo you sent to DP, dismay and disbelief. If I am to continue to serve this company, then I believe it can only be in my present situation. Transfer to dispatch would be totally unacceptable. I didn't put it quite like that, did I? All down here. I suppose I must have done. Well, I'm very sorry. And DP asked me to say he's very sorry, too. We both are. Well, sorry you suggested transferring me. No. Sorry that you can't see your way to remaining in the company. I beg your pardon. Well, given the medical report, we can't allow you to remain in your present post. I hope I made that clear to you yesterday. And uh, I think we were being quite generous in finding you another not altogether inferior position. I thought it was very inferior. Oh, clearly, yes. And uh, equally clearly, we have no option but to accept your decision. My decision? To leave the company. Now, look, I, th I think there must be some misunderstanding. But it is a decision that we respect. And I'm sure we'll be able to find you a reference and that we all wish you the very best for the future. I really must talk to DP. I, I, I insist on it. Oh, he's gone. He's gone to Amsterdam. In fact, accepting your resignation was the last thing he did before he left. He did say, in view of the medical report and your being prone to stress, that uh, well, perhaps it was best for everybody in the long run. So, what are you moving on to? Have you any plans? Uh, uh, no. No, no. Not really, no. Uh, two bottles of lager, look, right? Mm. Off out tonight, are we? Well, we thought we might look in at bingo. Yeah. Looks like we're not going to be only ones out tonight either. See, your landlady's not in evidence. I'm not quite sure where she is. Well, she's not easily overlooked, love, is she? I mean, if she were here, we'd know. Uh, Jack, will you not start all that again? Shut up, you'll have to listen. Yes, yeah. my little sweetheart. Bit out with a fantasy manager. Yeah, but don't let on, I said, because that is getting very protective of her. Gets decidedly shirty if he as much as mention it. Well, I'm surprised at her. Can I have into that sort of carry 96, on? 96, please. Thanks, love. Large cut, please, Betty. I'll get it, Betty. OK, large cut, Lindsay. Yeah, love. Evening, Mr. Baldwin. <coughs> Good evening, ladies. Hey, if you're on your own tonight, uh, well, me and I wouldn't mind being set up somewhere nice. Would you Don't drag me into this, Vera. I'd love to, Vera, but what would your husband think? Hey, me wouldn't say all. We've got what you call an open marriage, you know. It's quite common round there these days. Y yes, 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 I'll tell her. Y can you shout up? I can't hear you. Half an hour. Right. Ay, 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 ay. Betty. What? That was Alec. Alec? He's at Manchester Airport running for a cab. He's going to be back in half an hour. 